Touchdown Productions, now in our 16th year of sports excellence, is proud to present NU Minor Volleyball. Tonight, as we continue our coverage of league play, your first place Nevada Union Miners take on the undefeated Jesuit Marauders. It's a preview of the 2013 playoffs, and all the volleyball action begins right here, right now. It's your NorCal Game of the Week. The Nevada Union Miners take a break from their assault on the SFL title with a non-league game against the undefeated Jesuit Marauders. Good evening, volleyball fans, wherever you are across our worldwide audience. This is Steve Sitter sitting in for Jim Adams, the voice of NU Minor Volleyball. Joining me courtside is our regular volleyball expert, Ed Martin. Our producer and director in the Commander 2 is Gil Dominguez, and he's joined by the rest of the Touchdown Productions sports team of Gerald Davenport and Brian Wells. Ed, the Miners lost a tough one last night against the defending section champion, Granite Bay Grizzlies. Oh, yeah, Steve. The second time they've met this season, and Granite Bay is tough to beat in their own gym. I've seen a few matches where the Miners would have a leg up and come up short. This was five-game match there at Granite Bay. The Miners still in first place in the SFL because the Grizzlies lost last week to Rockland. So they've got two losses. Nevada Union now has one. The, the team, if they go ahead and win out, if they run the table like they did the first half of the season, then they're in a position to win the, the championship. But tonight's game is important, even though it's a non-league contest. Absolutely. Jesuit is a quality opponent. I think the JV match we just saw tells us that they're, you know, they've got a strong program. They hosted the first uh, section playoff, section title match, and, uh, you know, they're the sort of team we're, we're, after tomorrow night when we meet Del Oro, we've got sort of two of the bottom of the league teams to play, so you want to have a couple of good you have two or three good, strong matches before you get to the end of, of the season, then you're going to know what you're going to be playing in the playoffs. We can see these Jesuit again. We can get a, a handle on somebody outside our conference and get a handle on what sort of shape we're in for the postseason. So there is the backdrop for tonight's game in the Ally. You can see this game and all of our Game of the Week telecasts on our YouTube channel. And, of course, DVDs are always available for every game we produce. Now it's time for our first break of the evening. When we return, we'll take a look at the SFL and Capital League standings and get ready for the opening set. You're watching exclusive coverage of Nevada Union Minor Volleyball on the Touchdown Productions Sports Network. It's time to visit the newly remodeled B&C True Value Home and Garden Center. The new B&C has completely changed for your shopping convenience. Their new expanded garden center has everything you need, including expert advice on trees, shrubs, and perennials. Check out their new website and the new spring hours. And thank you for voting B&C the best hardware and building supply in 2012. So start right, start here at B&C True Value Home and Garden Center. The Hauser family reminds you if it's round, rubber, and it rolls, then you're sure to find it at Plaza Tire and Auto Service. From regular car and truck tires to small specialty tires for your trailers and golf carts, you can trust Plaza Tire has the tire for you. They stake their reputations on it every day. Plaza Tire and Auto Service. Auto repair done on your schedule, not theirs, in Penn Valley, Nevada City, and in Colfax. Be sure to join us each week right here on NCTV Channel 11 at 6.30 to 7.30 and of course on our YouTube channel, The Food and Farm Show. And, of course, brought to you by Touchdown Productions, the Foothills leader in sports television. This is Gil Dominguez saying thanks a lot for tuning in tonight. 
And be sure to stay with us after the game as we present the Touchdown Productions Player of the Game Award created by Stuckey Engravers. Once again, the Touchdown Productions staff will select the best player of tonight's game and award them with a plaque created by Stuckey's. It's the Touchdown Productions Player of the Game Award coming up right after this exciting sports telecast right here on your NorCal Game of the Week. Guys, back up to you. Thanks, Gil. And we are back at the Ally Gymnasium. You can see Nevada Union taking their warm-ups. Nevada Union just coming off of a heartbreaking loss to Granite Bay yesterday. And uh, according to Coach Salcedo, they lost due to blocking. Right. I think it cut both ways. You know, the, the minors, when their block was strong, they won. Games two and four, they had seven team blocks. Games one and three, two team blocks. Fifth game, no blocks. No blocks. That's, you know, you're playing Granite Bay. Both teams that play at a high enough level, you've got to have an effective block. Um, one thing that, that we also heard about, Granite Bay figured out how to block Bobby Curtis. And Trevor Bryant comes in, starts uh, picking up the slack, and they figure out how to block him. And I don't know whether it's just Noah Fisher hasn't had the the touches or or what, but it, it bit, the, bit the minors. As we take a look at the Sierra Foothill League stats, Nevada Union sitting on top with a six and one league record. Granite Bay right underneath them, five and two, with that loss to Rockland. Delaro underneath three and three, and then Rockland, Roseville, and Wood Creek at 0 and six, wrapping up the bottom. As we look at the Capital League standings, Whitney 11 and 0 with a decisive lead over basically every other team in this league. Bear River at four and four is in second. Rio Americano six and five. Placer and Lope and El Camino all three and eight. And as we come back here, we have the national anthem. Edition of the national anthem here. Well, with the that union chorus uh, to draw from, we always have a good group. To, to. As the two teams meet in the middle, pump themselves up for the coming match, and this will be a good one. Coach Roden and the managers spurring them on. Statistically, Nevada Union and Jesuit are very close. Uh, the the loss to Granite Bay is not yet up on Max Preps, but beforehand, Nevada Union was ranked number two in the section, Jesuit number four. Jesuit 5-0 and oh in league, so you know they will not be an easy team to beat tonight. No, that's a lot of skill. We saw, uh, we were watching Joe Thayer, the senior captain, number eight warming up the defense and let's see who am I looking at the uh, Troy Stanius senior but uh, what is it five seniors I want to say so <clears throat> experienced team only actually only one sophomore the rest juniors so 
yeah, a lot the, of experience. These teams definitely match up pretty uh, pretty evenly across the board. And we'll, we, we will be here tomorrow for Nevada Union taking on Del Oro, and that will be a huge game. There's the serve. Oh, nice kill there by Bobby Curtis. Got the, got the down rep on the way off the block there. She's still on her crutches, but a real gamer. Evan Kittle back to serve. And that will be an ace. Wow. It's nice. The libero and the left back both tried to take that one in. It's a good way to get a double hit call. That's a good way to start if you're in the back of Absolutely. Ooh, service error for Kittle. Just as an effective way to kill one. Ooh, hate that when you give up your own serve. It's Alec Gable serving. Oh, and a great fake there by Bojack. Really, that really was nice. I mean, he saw the block was already up, and he could get through it like that, and, and just held his held his uh, touch for a moment. And that's Curtis back for the serve. And just a little too far there. Watch those service errors. That errors were bad on them last night too. up. And just out there, Greg Paul went down the line and could not hold it. Tough shot trying to get around the block and down the line. Very well placed kill there for Bryant. Brian's been very consistent with those shots all year. As indeed, Marks comes in for Bojack. And Heavy back to serve. As it goes off the unit, and that seems to have thrown everyone off. Didn't wow. bounce the way it's expected. Chandler Heavy dives for it. And just out of everybody's reach. Yeah, that sort of dissolved after the ball hit the heating unit. <laughs> you don't know where the carom is going to take you. Medina on the short serve. Good dig there for Curtis. Blocked at the front there. There's Curtis finishing it off. Yeah, had, a, had a gap there in the middle of the uh, floor, and he was able to find it off the block. All right. There's Mason Salcedo back for the serve. Oh, that was a rifle shot there from Ryan Buck. Bounced off Bobby Curtis's chest, coming off Chandler Heffy's arms. And the score is 5 5. Buck back to serve. We have a pause here. Ooh, Curtis with a nosebleed. I think that camera might have. Gone a bit higher than his chest. I, th I thought it was his chest. I made very well. I hate catching a volleyball in the nose. <laughs> They're not that heavy, but it's a sharp, sharp strike. Yeah, that was that was quite the spike there from Buck caroming off of Chandler Heppy. All right. And a very well placed kill there from Austin Marks. You know, you give up a little bit of height with, from Bojack to Marks, but Marks' effect uh, is a very effective net player. He has very good uh, court presence. Oh, yeah. 
Let's see. We got to figure out what we've got with Curtis's nose bleeding. Yeah, it looks like they're trying to scrub the blood off of his uh, jersey. I don't know if that's what the uh, ref's talking about, but yeah, no blood, no jewelry. You know, it's. Here's Bryant with the serve. Partial deflection there. And there's the kill from Buck. The other, the other senior captain, Ryan Buck. He's definitely proving he knows his way around the net. Man. These these guys are these guys are good at what they do. Six six here for the miners and the Marauders. Trying to surprise him there was Kittle. Yep. Um, they're gonna yep, double touch there. Yeah, so that's gonna stay with Jesuit. Yeah, if you if you don't have your you know platform set good, you're just gonna get that call. It's too easy a call. Ooh. That was a nice save there. Yeah, lost his footing. Oh, whoa, great. Ty Blount got it down. It's from our location, we can't quite see the line. Yeah, it looked like Jesuit was arguing just a, a small amount for that, but the point does go to Nevada Union. Ty Blount, a good server. What wow. was a decisive kill there from Troy Stanius. There was no one around there to try and dig that. Nope. And there's senior captain Joe Thayer back for the serve. As soon as the confusion on the court is sorted out here. Yeah, Jazz were up by one. Now they're they're uh, asking if all the blood is off of Bobby Curtis's jersey, and it appears that it is. Okay, he got the he got the solvent to it. So, trainers are there to verify that they did in fact clean it. And he is back on the court, which is a very good thing for Nevada Union. Oh, but there's a nice block there. It's for Stanius just denying Curtis's Absolutely. kill attempt. When we first saw Stanius, he's got a. a Metallic headband on, and you think you better be able to back it up, dude. Oh, okay. And a service error there by Stanius. A little apologetic about the service error there. Well, oh, that's her handcuffs. Ooh, look at, oh, wow. Terrific recovery. Very nice recovery. Uh, and then they just can't they can't recover from that kill Greg Paul Greg really Paul. effective on the right side this evening couple of kills for him Nevada Union proving very effective in spreading Jesuit out to get those kills to drop There's Kittle smash of a serve wow, just gets was... over Paul going for the kill Curtis has to just set it over. Ooh. And that is wow. just out. Yeah. Well, they had an earlier one. Sandy has had a, a set that to me was very questionable. Changed angle and not didn't get called, but just to kind of rally. Oh, yeah, there's Kittle serve sailing long. Mm. So Nevada Union with a few service errors. Yeah, you really got to watch that. We got three or four in this first set. That's not, you can't do that with a team like Jesuit. And with a score 10 to 10, every point is pretty important. And oh, there's the double go. hit. Like you were saying, I think you may have jinxed him there, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, scary biz. There's a brilliant hit there wow. by Paul with the left hand going up. 
and finding the back line. Oh, yeah. It's that old thing of if you've got a left-handed right side hitter, you're good. Paul is in a situation where he's got to step up because, you know, Jesuit seems to have some of that same playbook on keeping Curtis from having his swings be as effective as normal. Oh, partial block there yeah. by able, Paul. Cannot able to quite. come off the side there. Stanius again, really effective for them. Stanius and Buck are definitely the two to watch out for, for Jesuit. That was pretty much of a, a blooper. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was very weak. I think uh, <laughs> a pulled a lot of people there. <laughs> Not the miners, luckily. <laughs> no, they were on top of it, let it fall out. Here's their setup. Nice dig there by Procida. Didn't touch it. Didn't. Oh. oh they're going to call a touch. Oh. Hey, you, you know, you hope he didn't touch it, but you knew he did. Sometimes I'll hear touches whether they occur or not. Without headphones, at least. <laughs> Eric Medina on the serve. Yep. Trevor Bryant hits it into the net. Oh. Oh, Jesuit up 14-12 now. The Miners have, have got an offensive challenge they need to solve sort of right this second. And oh, they yeah. seem to have done it there with Austin Marks. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, that middle attack, something you don't always see, sort of like blocking in, in high school ball in the Miners can bring that and, and of course we've seen something Jesuit here. I'll say it with the serve. Yeah, Ryan Buck again. <laughs> the ball in the broadcast booth a little bit. Ryan Buck again. And, and like the second baseman that makes the out comes up to serve. Jesuits setting up themselves. Nice dig there from Blount. And there's the kill. Oh, good. Well, Alec Gable had a good swing, but luckily able to hit it off of uh, Blount, able to hit it off of Eric Medina. And Trevor Bryant there to finish it off. All right. We've seen from him all year. I had, my, I had my numbers backwards. Block by Curtis. Man, I like, I like Procida, their libero. He's really able to cover some ground and, and has a good eye for the ball. Yeah, Jesuit has, uh, has themselves spread out a lot so they can kind of mix and match as the point goes on. That seems to be working to their advantage more often than not. There's the kill by Curtis. Curtis with three kills by my count so far. Riley Burson's coming back in. Mostly seen him as a defensive specialist serving here. Oh, oh. And can't get that one over the net. Wow. You hate that. You come in to serve and right in the net. The Jesuit with a 17-15 lead here. Joe Thayer back to serve. And there's Bojack. Nope, no touch. Um, trying to hit the slide there and too sharp an angle. And they're gonna be a there's gonna be a timeout here for Nevada Union. I think mm -hmm. they're gonna try and figure out some sort of offense that will work against Jesuit, who have been very successful in stopping the net game. Oh, yeah, that's no, our normal offensive weapons have been spiked a lot more than you'd like to find that. Here we go. Yeah, there's the Food and Farm Show scoreboard. You see Nevada Union trailing 18 to 15 to the Jesuit Marauders. 
And this is shaping up to be about the game we expected. Two very even teams with uh, very similar strengths and similar playing styles. And this, uh, this wouldn't surprise me at all if this went four or five games. Oh, not at all. I, I really think, you know, this is the kind of quality volleyball you see when two teams at, at this level meet up. You've got, you know, you've got blocking, you've got middle attack, you've got, you know, good ball handling and, and good playmaking. And that's what has brought their game. Just there with the serve. Almost handcuffs Curtis, but he recovers. And Jesuit recovers from Curtis's shot. Up goes Vojak. Vojak can't get it to fall. And now Nevada Union might be able to set something up, but Curtis has to just hit it lazily over. And there's the oh. block by oh, Evan great. Kittle. Yeah, that was Gay Alec Gable had a good swing there, but Kittle able to get a block up and hit it out in no man's land. Now Kittle back to serve. He has a few errors so far. That's a good serve. Down the line, but not in. And that was Alec Gable. Trying to hit it straight down the line. Coach, Just goes out. Coach Jason Johnson up, giving his players a little bit of encouragement. Oh, and Kittle serve goes out. Uh, Kittle. See Kittle going Look, up there and just yeah. it's great position. Terrific. And he's he's got the outside with Bojack on the inside, so he's got he's got a chance to seal it up like that. And there's a smash from Curtis <laughs> that caroms off into the stands. The, uh, the up ref, I think, thought he might get that one, so he was a little bit relieved. <laughs> yeah, he's got a smile on his face. <laughs> you hate getting hit when you're up on the stand like that. It's Ty Blount for the serve. And a, oh. a block, but it goes straight down. He's, I think the uh, time out takes here. the time. Well, 20 to 18, you, you really needed to come back, and they, they just are hanging back there. And, you know, when you went to a 25-point set like this, you thought uh, first to 20 wouldn't matter, but you get in these situations where it's close and the other team's at 20 and you're at 18, it's like, okay, let's stop and think, what are we going to do because, you know, they got five, we got seven, if we're going to even get to 25 together. So, well, 30 points in the side out era, you played a 30 point uh, game, and now you play a 25 point match. So you're a little more into the end game so often. But, you know, when they're close like this, it, it's a psychological um, still. Yeah, as we take a look at the Food and Farm Show scoreboard, Nevada Union. Hanging tough down 20 to 18, and they've, you know, you know, they're hanging back. They're still only two points down, and that's been about how far they've been behind this whole set. So they're not, they're not falling behind, but they're not catching up either. Well, and, and you can't trade points with a game like, with a team like Jesuit. They could run three on you, and you're done. So here's George Presida serving. There's Bryant. You see the Can't get it to fall. There's Bojack blocking that. Oh. And the kill from McAleese. Now it's I didn't see much from him, but he saw his chance there. Rosita still serving. And Bojack with the kill. Oh, yeah. It's a bit of a fortuitous roll off of the net. Maybe pushed it out of the way of Ryan Buck. And the kill there by Ryan Buck. You know, able to split that block between Brian and Marks. Buck is turning out to be Jesuit's biggest threat. 
on offense. Here's Eric Medina serving. And Kittle sets up Marks beautifully, and Marks finishes it off. It's almost that same just quick vertical set we saw with Bojack a minute ago, being able to roll out a, a consistent middle attack is a really handy thing in a moment like this. Still down by two. But. Salcedo serve. There's a block there. A Bryant. Oh, oh. And, and Todd Blount flying through the air trying to get a hand on it. Can't quite recover there. There's Buck serving for Jesuit. Coach Jason Johnson up. Ooh, a good recovery there by Heppy. Wow. I can't be sure, but I think that one hit the net. Looked like it, yeah. I mean, Thayer and McAleese both up, but it didn't look like they made any contact at all. And now we've got a set point here, 24-20. Buck serving. Serves it into the net, luckily, for yeah. Nevada Union. Take that one. Okay, Trevor Bryant's got the hill to climb here. Well, if anyone can do it, I think he's the one. Oh, oh, got oh the he pancake. gets the pancake under Whoa. it. Oh, holds it up in the air just long enough. Oh, Kittle can't quite come up with that block as it falls. Man, that was an exciting point. So Nevada Union dropping the first set by a score of 25 to 21. But there is a lot of promise in Nevada Union's playing. Bobby Curtis putting on a, a good show there with uh, about four kills. Austin Marks has three. Kittle's in there with a block and an ace. Bojack with a couple of kills. There's the Food and Farm Show scoreboard. 21-25 minors there in the first, but you know, not not a runaway by any means. Unfortunately, the service errors pretty much tell the tale, I'm afraid. Yeah, all, all, all those errors really did come back. Now let's count it up here. Curtis with one, Burzens with one, Bryant with two, Kittle with three, Vojak with one. That's, that's a lot of errors compared to just Jesuit with uh, proceeded with one, Buck with one, Stanius with one. Well, that's five points of uh, extra in errors and four in losing. So, you know, that's, that's one that the Miners have had trouble with. We've seen over the years, you know, those unforced errors on the serve. And to me, that's, you know, that's just a tough one. You've got to get the ball in play. It's like the hit and run, you know, get the ball in play. Yeah, and... <laughs> And the the consistency is something that we've we've seen from Nevada Union. They they have a lot of talent. They go for the big plays, and uh, most of the time they are successful. But when when they have this many errors, is it is it time you rethink your strategy, or do you just keep going, hope that it's uh, it's first set jitters, and just kind of hope they evaporate as the match goes on? Oh, a little a little of both. I think the mental game is always kind of an issue with Nevada Union because they've got the talent and the the sort of boldness to do what they do. But when you're with the team as as fundamentally, uh, I don't know, fundamentally sound always sounds a little bit like you're selling them short. You know, a team who who has the fundamentals and is able to execute like Jesuit, then you know you got to bring your best game. And if that's the bold game, maybe that is. But you know, they, these guys don't make a lot of mistakes, so you can't expect them to give you points, and you can't give them points. So, um, but it's yeah, talk about talk about a good tune-up for the postseason. This is one. Oh yeah, Jesuit's been playing very solid. Uh, they only have a couple big hitters in Stanius and Buck, but Presida's digging out everything. Uh, McAleese has got. Uh, a dig in there. They just don't give up. 
Exactly. And, you you know, you see that with uh, Buck and Thayer, good senior leadership. Just, But, you know, uh, they draw from all over the Sacramento area, St. Francis and Jesuit, you know, brother and sister schools, and uh, always both of them strong. Trevor Bryant got to serve. Ooh, ooh. Oh, puts it oh. away. I think Curtis and Bojack weren't sure whose whose ball that was, and really bit him. That overpass was something you could have perhaps done something with. Well, not quite an overpass, but close enough. That's a good recovery there from Paul. And it comes back with a block. Ooh. And another block. And there's Troy oh. Stanius getting in the face. Wow. Thought that one might land out, but no such luck. Jesuit continuing to assert their net presence. Oh, yeah. There with the serve. And Bojack with the kill. Oh, very good there. Bojack getting more involved in offense than we've seen of him lately. I've got him with three kills. Yeah, he's real well, you've got to step up with your middle attack there, and, and Bojack luckily has you know had a lot of offensive experience, so he can do it. And he certainly has the height. Ooh. And Nevada Union manages to keep it off the court, resulting in an error there by Stanius. Didn't look like he connected with that solidly. And here's Ty Blount with the serve. And a big dig there and a Saved by Paul, keeping it in play. And Stanius hits it into the net this time. Oh, yeah. Greg Paul doing some good stuff here. Let's let's get this one. Nice set. Up and over. But wide. So, yeah. Good one there for the Miners. Blount with the serve. And hooks it out. Going back. Okay, we had the we had the other play there. Oh, that Blount with a beauty of a dig there. Absolutely, Happy keeps it in play, and to to get that ball back over Paul, you know, like, that was really where I was sort of starting. Greg Paul having a really good night for the Miners. Just every little thing he's he's hit from the left, hit from the right. And as we cut back in, Paul gets a kill of his own. Uh, and they're going to say that block comes out. Got <laughs> <laughs> yeah, setting up. Oh, nice dig from Prasita, but to no avail. Marks gets yet another kill with a well-placed shot at the net. Yeah, Joe Shoots made a completely extended dive, but Prasita's pass just wasn't where he could get to it. And there's Burzins in to serve. And, uh, what are we going to call? We're going to call... Uh, Looks like a double hit there. Yeah. So. so errors continuing to plague Nevada Union as the score is five to five. Medina serving. And cannot clear the net, so the error goes both ways. And NU with the lead, six to five. Kittle back to serve. Kittle with the only ace so far. And a 
it looks like he'll get another one. Wow. Well, it comes over low and, and a little bit of a floater. It's a hard one to pick up. And serve. Kill serving again. And the block falls out. Oh. All of Jesuit was on our side of the front line, and it unfortunately out by enough to see it. Yeah, they couldn't have hit that one even if they wanted to. Mm. Buck with the serve. Nice dig there. Ooh. Bryant manages to dig it out. Kittle racing across to hit it back over. And there's the kill by Alec Gable. And you hung on for a while, but could not stop that spike from Gable. Yeah. Gable had a little swag after that. <laughs> As Curtis tries to place it, Farside can't do it. Oh, total lift there. Yeah, they're, they're going to get lift. McAleese on the... Yeah. On the lift. I mean, that is Palm and oh, 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 Coach Johnson. Oh, come on. Not even. You know, it's like you need to be set and handle the ball like that. <laughs> nice Salcedo for the serve. Comes across, digs it out. And Kittle gets it deep. Spike goes okay. long, and they are not going to call a touch there. Nope. Coach Johnson really, really trying to work the ref, and I don't think he's getting far at all. He's not uh, picking his best best plays for that. Oh, Salcedo can't get it to clear the net there. Salcedo go home and make about a thousand serves the next <laughs> week or so. <laughs> got a friend got cut from her high school team, couldn't get the ball over the net. You got to do it. I hear that is pretty important in volleyball. <laughs> oh, Jesuit recovering from that Ooh. Curtis spike just to hit it out like that. Yeah, even even when I was just playing picnic match games, I, I still could get the ball over the net. I was always grateful. Ooh. Uh, there's a custom. No, don't say it. Oh, the custom made. Oh, and managed to managed to hit it sideways. Bojack clenched teeth there. Nosey but missed an opportunity. Miners up by three, nonetheless. Yeah, I believe they're gonna they're gonna give Nevada Union the point. I'm not quite sure what the rationale is. Uh, yeah, timeout for Jesuit, maybe. And Jesuit, I think, trying to reset, get some of that momentum back that they had in the first game and even the start of this game as Nevada Union is up 11-8. I wonder, it, it almost looked like they had somebody in the net or something. I didn't quite catch the call trying to get a handle on all the action, but yeah. yeah. yeah you, see, you see the Food and Farm Show scoreboard, Nevada Union up 11-8 after dropping the first set. And, uh, Ed, I think you're right. I think they're calling that someone from Jesuit, I believe, Maybe even Ryan Buck was in the net. And that was all I could make out of that one. Uh, Coach Johnson really trying to, to make points with working the refs and not having a lot of luck with that. I think he's feeling a little frustrated to find himself behind at this stage in the match. Well, Jesuit is more than capable of coming back. Oh, yeah. You, you've got to put points in the bank whenever you can with these guys across the net. Gable a little off balance, couldn't quite finish off that kill. Curtis trying to go far side. Yep. Oh, oh, Stanius really had that one. You know, Thayer is really something to watch. I mean, he gets pushed right up against the net, and he'll come up with a play. I mean, I really have enjoyed watching him set. As hard much as it's put us in a tough position. Coach Johnson coming off, rolling his eyes. <laughs> There's Bojack. Oh. Yep. Wow, more, just more sloppy play from Jesuit. Right. 
that's what that was you know coach johnson comes back rolling his eyes and they make another sloppy play he's he's going to get irate with his players here in a second yeah there's really not a lot you can do there and it's been the sharpness of their play that's kept jesuit in such a good position Buck gets it deep. Has a block there from Gable. And Kittle finishes it off. Oh, terrific. With authority. Well, Bojack popped it up. Kittle had a, a good swing there on the left side. Nice play by the Miners. And they're up, up by four. And Blount back for the serve. Oh. And flies it wide. Blount's had a couple errors this game. Normally a very consistent server. Gable with a low serve. Another block at the net. And there's Greg Paul. Oh. Ooh, Stanny has really put out with himself about that one. I mean, just right, right down his front. Greg Paul having a superb game. Oh, absolutely. And that serve is not oh, going to get over. Oh, Chandler happy. Oh, <laughs> I hate when that happens. Just trying to place it just over the net, but you have to get it over. Proceed with the serve. And there's Kittle. Evan Kittle. Oh, just wow. Bryant serving Kittle hitting. You know, that was last year. Kittle had an injury and, and missed a good bit most of the season, and you really can tell how it hurt the Miners watching the kind of versatility he can bring. Ball pops up near us. Gable oh. it up perfectly oh. for Trevor Bryant. Trevor Bryant. That, that wasn't a middle blocker taking advantage of the overpass. That was a hitter. <laughs> Bryant looked like he'd been waiting his whole life for that one. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there's Buck again. Hung in the block like that. Bryant looking over at Coach Salcedo. Seems like Ryan Buck, whenever he gets up to hit it, it seems to fall on the Nevada Union side somehow. Whether it's around, through, or straight down. Oh, Austin Marks yeah, hitting it right at the blocker. Coming, wiping it off the block there. And I think one thing Buck does is, is he can read hands really well and knows what's going to be his effective shot in that situation. It's, it's something good to see. Buck just has to flip it over. Oh, and Bobby Curtis hits it right into the net. And he hasn't taken a swing recently, so you wonder if he's a little unsure, you know, with the trouble he's had with the block. He, might, he also might be trying to aim it just a little bit because he's been getting blocked, and yeah. he, he's met with a lot of troubles. Oh, there's a gift there as Buck serves it well, well out. The Miners keep moving up, 18-13, so... The sloppy play of Jesuit and the net play of Nevada Union has really turned this game around compared to the first. And another error, wow. Alec Gable spikes it into the net. No, it was 19-13 with Mason Salcedo back to serve. Coach Johnson got up and then thought better of it and sat back down. Gable hitting it long. Bojack placing it just oh, out. Oh, just long. Oh, it looked like Gables might go long, and then Bojack's did. And Jesuit, not that far back yet, 1914. Mm -hmm. Kent McAleese back to serve. That's Curtis. And it falls Made it work. down. Well, that's a much better swing from Curtis. Oh, yeah. The block was at his height. He was able to catch it. So here's Bryant serving from the far corner. 
Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, Thayer. Thayer's just like, he got stabbed. <laughs> That's a terrible setter's dink from Thayer, who's been so consistent. One more time out, he'll take it. Coach Johnson really having a hard time with his team right now. Down by seven in the second one. And As you see the Food and Farm Show scoreboard, Nevada Union matching their point total from the first game, up seven in the second game. And it really has been their net play that's turned this one around. I mean, Jesuit's been helping out with the errors, but Nevada Union playing much better at the net, not giving up nearly as many points. Well, I think being able to go to Bojack and Marks and then having Evan Kittle come in on the left side and, and Bryant set really has let them reload their offense. And, yeah, I mean, Go Thayer walks back over to his bag and gets a, something to drink and just composes wits after this last few points. Yeah, Jesuit trying to reset. A great serve there by Bryant. Wow. Bryant's going to get himself an ace. Just falls right in the middle of about four Jesuit players, and none of them can make a solid hit with it. Wow. Well, after, I mean, they've still got to get three points before Jesuit can get a whole lot more, but feels a lot better than it did. And that one's going to oh. fall out. Wow. Stanius with another error. That's at least three this game alone. <laughs> Coach Johnson didn't even look at him when he came off. <laughs> wow. Wow. Going to fall out as well. Wow, a desperate bump set falls out. Mm. And we've got a set point here, 24-14. Brian's running a pretty good streak of momentum here. Oh. Lances the net as it goes over. Gable can't finish it. Paul with an attempt. Can't get that to fall. Oh. And that's going to fall off of Curtis's deflection. Yeah, happy, happy able to get to it, but not under it. So Jesuit showing... Some signs of life despite being down 24-15. It's their serve. And Paul hits it off uh -oh. a long block. And Paul again dug by Procida. There's a block by Vojak. And Kittle hits it out. Oh, oh. Kittle trying to make a little bit too much of what he was given. It's now 24-16. No one will let him get too much momentum to go into game three. Ah, oh, but Bojack oh, puts, very that, nice. Bojack. puts that down handily. That, that halfway across the court, that inside set to the middles has worked two or three times lately. So a couple of, couple of arrows in the quiver there. And there's the Food and Farm Show scoreboard. Nevada Union victorious in set two, 25-16. And we're going to step aside, and we want to remind you that you're watching exclusive coverage of Nevada Union Minor Volleyball on the Touchdown Productions Sports Network. It's time to visit the newly remodeled BNC True Value Home and Garden Center. The new BNC has completely changed for your shopping convenience. Their new expanded garden center has everything you need, including expert advice on trees, shrubs, and perennials. Check out their new website and the new spring hours. And thank you for voting BNC the best hardware and building supply in 2012. So start right, start here at BNC True Value Home and Garden Center. The Hauser family reminds you if it's round, rubber, and it rolls, then you're sure to find it at Plaza Tire and Auto Service. From regular car and truck tires to small specialty tires for your trailers and golf carts, you can trust Plaza Tire has the tire for you. They stake their reputations on it every day. Plaza Tire and Auto Service. Auto repair done on your schedule, not theirs, in Penn Valley, Nevada City, and in Colfax.
Be sure to join us each week right here on NCTV Channel 11 at 6.30 to 7.30. And, of course, on our YouTube channel, The Food and Farm Show. And, of course, brought to you by Touchdown Productions, the Foothills leader in sports television. This is Gil Dominguez saying thanks a lot for tuning in tonight. And be sure to stay with us after the game as we present the Touchdown Productions Player of the Game Award created by Stuckey Engravers. Once again, the Touchdown Productions staff will select the best player of tonight's game and award them with a plaque created by Stuckey's. It's the Touchdown Productions Player of the Game Award coming up right after this exciting sports telecast right here on your NorCal Game of the Week. Guys, back up to you. And we're back here at the Ally for the start of set three. Nevada Union comes back in set two to tie at one set apiece. This has been a, an up and down battle between these two very talented teams. Well, and some of it's going to depend on Joe Thayer and his focus. He, he sort of lost a little bit. Coach Johnson up pretty animated talking about things, but more entertaining as assistant coach. Oh, what a shot there. What? A no-look tap from Trevor Bryant. I really thought he might be jammed against the net, but he turned that Made his lemons in the lemonade, as we used to say. Oh, that was quite the tricky shot there. He's still grinning. That's that's funny. Oh, yeah. And oh. Bojack wasting no time putting that one away. Bo Bojack looking at his coach. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, look at that. I mean, Proceda barely gets moving before it's on the floor. Oh, and a very wow. similar play wow. there. Wow. Curtis mimicking Vojak from the previous point. Right out to a 3-0 lead. Ah, the, the real head, the, the original head coach, Julio Salcedo, cheering on the Miners right now. Guess what's going to get a chance here. Nice dig there from Kittle. Locked. Vojak ooh, ooh. using every inch of his height there. Oh. Now Nevada Union sets up. Oh. And wow. Schultz finally gets one to, to fall. He's had two or three that won't go down. But Taking advantage of Nevada Union's confusion. It was his, his second kill there for Schultz, but he's had more, more attempts than, considerably more attempts than kills. And Gable, the hard serve. That one goes wow. into the net. Gable can't get that one up and over. And I have Ty Blount coming in. <laughs> I think I think Kittle's trying to steal his players there a little bit, give them a little punches like that. Oh, oh. As the uh, ball comes over into the uh, that broadcast booth, into here. the booth area. I think I think the miners kind of skittering around, and yeah, they didn't seem too sure of what was going on on that point. Low serve there, and they're going to say that was. Oh. He'll make out. the call himself. Looked like far line judge wasn't too clear what he was seeing, and the, the near one may not have had a good view with the stanchion in his way. I think that was the right call, though. Oh, yeah, it was. And wow, look at the elevation there. Greg Paul. You know, Greg Paul just can, he can do what he needs to do. By my count, that's five kills for Paul. Playing a very good game. He's happy with the serve. And there's the block, wow. Austin Marks. Kent McAleese just, it was like a bee in his hair or something. 
<laughs> Evan Kittle runs over to get the <laughs> Coach Salcedo telling him what to do there. Nevada Union having some fun out there on the court up 6-3. Well, they can keep their focus right now. They've, they've met a, a pretty serious challenge, def defensive challenge from Jesuit, and if they can just keep their focus, the food and farm show scoreboard tells us they've got the momentum right now, and they just got to keep it. Games always look better when you're winning. Oh, my gosh, so much better. Happy back for the serve. Buck allowing and you to set up, and there's the wow. kill again, Paul. I, right on the line. Well, you get those left-handed right side hitters, and it just confuses the block. Paul taking full advantage there. Happy serve. And a decisive wow. block. Austin marks the second of the game. Those are and those are solid blocks he's had. I mean, he, he reads it and gets it in, keeps it in the court. And they're coming off his hand faster than they're coming off Jesuit's hand. Ooh, managed to get by the block that time. Hold the down ref almost caught another one. <laughs> so it's, it's dangerous down here. It's a it's a lively uh, evening here at the Ally Gym. Cruising right along, not long, you know. Into the third game and not much over half an hour has elapsed. Oh, and that serve flew off Medina's hand very awkwardly. He's upset at himself for, for that one. No, that's not a stat line you want to have, two service errors. No, no, it's not. <laughs> Poor Medina. There's Burzens for the serve. Low clears the net. And Buck doesn't have a chance on that one, so he just throws it over. Wow. Oh, wow. And off the heating oh. unit. Oh, oh, oh. oh, you lose, dude. That was wow. a very fortuitous bounce there from Nevada Union. Oh, yeah. As that ball hits the unit and lands in the middle of the entire team. If we played at Jesuit, there'd be even more unit points. Oh, a brilliant oh. dig oh. there by Burzens. Keeping this oh, oh, play alive. Oh, Off the oh. unit again. <laughs> a lively rally. Another great dig there. Oh, by my Heavy. God. Off the. Whoa. Oh, Heaven Kittle. Oh. Oh, and they're going to say that Kittle crossed the line. I think he's going to call it, call him out of bounds that he hit it. Ah, that's a really questionable call, I'm afraid. Uh, this, this ref has been really consistent, and he's going to say he hit it out. Oh, that he went into the net? Oh, no, I don't think so. That was a controversial call there as Bryant goes to talk to he it was judge. He called Kittle. Well, after that dubious He's call, he actually touched. Uh, he says he touched the net, not the pole. Or he said he. he I thought, well, let's let's see what we did here. see. I mean, that was that's just an odd call. Oh. Uh, uh, all that float there. It's a big swing there. Heppy comes up with it. Kittle goes over. He's right. I, I, you know, you're looking down the net. He sees Kittle come into essentially the tie-offs there on the outside and, and sees contact. Uh, he may have been the person in the best position to see it, but that's a, that's a tough call. Whoa. As we get back to the action... Wow. Austin Marks with a kill, and Nevada Union is riding the momentum once again. 
Austin Marks, what has he got? Seven kills or six kills? Man. Kittle back to the serve, but the judges having some words with uh, with Eric Medina, a Jesuit. There's the action. There's a block there by Bryant. Good dig by Heppy. Oh, wow. And a, oh. What a save there by McAleese. McAleese. And it, then the ball goes into the net, and he almost sticks his hand in the net trying to get to it. That's that's an uh, oh yeah, well, thirteen to five. You, Coach Johnson, you've got to take a timeout. A yeah. lot of light light hearts on the Nevada Union side. I think I think the up ref was trying to get Eric Medina to stand still but at the serve. He was <laughs> shifting around there in the back. As we take a look at the Food and Farm Show scoreboard, you see Nevada Union out to a lead here in game number three, thirteen to five. They are really riding this momentum. There's a good shot of Coach Johnson for Jesuit trying to get some life back into his team who are just making a lot of errors that we didn't see them make in the first game. No, and it seemed like there was a, a moment there where he sort of realized it was getting away and it sort of rolled his eyes coming back to the bench, and, and they just haven't been able to regroup since then. Yeah, his, his big hitters, uh, Stanius, has made more errors than kills. Uh, Buck is being shut down pretty handily right now by Nevada Union's net presence. You know, they've had to go to Gable and Schutz to get anything, and that hasn't been that much. Well, there's Gable. Can't put it away. Oh. And just off of oh. the hole. Uh, way too sharp an angle to cut for Curtis. He's halfway up from the attack line and three feet or more outside the sideline. Oh, we got John Howe in for Jesuit. Trying to mix things up. And a handy kill there. Wow. Austin Marks. That ball was not touched. Mm, no, it was quite a quite a swing there. Austin Marks with seven kills tonight. He's playing quite a game. Salcedo with a high looping Ooh. serve, and Jesuit takes full advantage of it. Gable managing to get one through the defense. <laughs> Salcedo out, Marks in, Marks out, Heppy in. The era of the libero. There's Thayer's serve. Curtis just puts it over. And some miscommunication at the net. And I think Curtis going up may have distracted him there. That was a, a interesting to watch. So Yeah, Thayer looked as if he expected the ball to just come to him. And instead had to kind of scramble and couldn't get the ball high enough to save anything. Bryant serving. Bryant digging. Then Buck with a nice dig. Vojak just pokes it over. And Gable. Oh, too bad it's out. Yeah, Gable able to get it on the block, and it goes back the way it came. Yeah, Karam's off of Vojak just a bit too much and lands out untouched. Gable with the serve. Curtis was kind of a rough pass. Oh, and a bad set there. Whoa. John but Howell there. not in a position to get around it. Lost his footing anyway, and I think that may have been Gables to come out of the, the back with or something. That, that was a play that just never took shape. And serving uh -huh. that was David Mateo, and he serves that wide. Well, we saw him the other night and had a good outing, but sometimes you walk in cold and the serve doesn't go anywhere you want it to. That's right. Against Wood Creek, he was the dig leader. Exactly. Yeah, good ball control. So a little 
bit of a shock. That's Proceda with the serve. Bryant to Vojak. Ah. Vojak coming alive in this third game with a second kill. That that right hand seam there, he's able to come up in there and find the floor. That's, okay, Mateo gets to stay in. At 680, has such an advantage. Oh, yeah. Oh, a bit of a broken play at the net there. And there was Paul going for the kill. Can't quite get it. But he comes up with a big block, forces Jesuit to just put it back over. And there's Kittle wow. with a little help from the net there. Pops it up and just drops it where no one from Jesuit was. Yeah, they just had Schutz up there, a single block in a situation where Kittle's been really effective as a hitter tonight. So not, not particularly good playmaking or, or defense by uh, Jesuit in that one. And we're just seeing the wheels coming off. And... Oh, you knew that one was going to come. Yeah, Kittle can't quite get a handle on that. Yeah, McAuley's got a good close set like that. But I think, uh, interestingly, what we talked about, Nevada Union's come back and played a, a fairly fundamental kind of game, and it's it's holding well for them. And they've done a really good job of shutting down Ryan Buck. Crucial. And Stanius is basically not even on the court most of the time now. Oh, did it go? Oh, good. I couldn't quite see because Procida was right over there. Austin Marks is just putting on a show. He and Greg Paul, not the usual offensive uh, stars, and they're just doing it. No, and Bryant with only four kills, Kittle with three, Vojak's got six, and Marks with, I believe, eight. Oh, 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 oh. And it rolls in the garter in the ceiling, and Kittle just places it. That's, oh, talk about the ball bouncing your way. That ball rolled about six feet along the girder in the roof. Completely. I, I, unprecedented in my experience that to get something like that in this gym, just roll along the, the web of the girder along the top of the flange. Uh, and Ryan Buck finally getting one to fall. And only his second kill. He had four kills in the first game, three in the second, and only two so far in the third. He's wow. slowly being bled dry of statistics by this Nevada Union defense, but still a monstrous serve. Oh, oh, Gabe Satterino gets the swing, but unfortunately the block is there. Uh, was that McAleese? I couldn't quite tell. I believe McAleese had the block on that one, but Satterino back in. Trying to get another stat. We saw him last week with his first ever kill, so some fun for him. Yeah, with Nevada Union up 20 to 12 in this game, you can kind of afford to get some of your Ooh. guys Ooh. in. And a very good block there by Joe Thayer going up against Trevor Bryant, a battle of the eights. Exactly, and and Bryant really not having a lot of room to work. They are able to get in there and, and essentially joust as setter to setter. Yeah, Thayer had uh, a good amount more momentum. And Satterino going for the kill again. Jesuit recovers. And there's Kittle. Oh, off terrific. The, the deflection, and Kittle with his fifth kill of the game. Off the high hands like that. Uh, this... It's reassuring to see him be able to reload the offense like this. Oh, uh, but Kittle with another Kevin service Kittles. error. Oh, his fifth error of the game of the match. Only his first of the game. Yep. That is that is when you want to have a sudden a serving clinic all weekend long. Oh, and there's the off the Oh, Gabe Satterino gets another. It's not a fluke. Look at that. The team really loves that. And into the game comes Mason Salcedo into serve. 
22 to 14 Nevada Union lead. And pretty much back to the starting lineup with uh, Burzens in the DS position. Oh, and a great Whoa. fake there from Bojack, faking like he was going to go in hard and just tapping it. Yeah, Prasida no just couldn't get far enough up for it. I think if, if he had really, if Bojack had really swung, Prasida might have very well had a play there, but with that hesitation, he didn't. Wow. A good recovery there from both teams. Uh, and yeah, they're going to say that's Jesuit's point. All right. But Bryant having words with the umpire. Yeah. yeah. Oh, call everybody in. Be yeah, sure right. just what happened. Call the line judges in. Yeah. Because Nevada Union is saying that that ball was hit into the pole. It was sure, it was sure right in there. I you see the conference there and. Yeah, they're uh, going to reverse it. Not a big surprise. A lot of excitement from the minor fans. And we're going to... You can hear the crowd chanting as Nathaniel Cartmel uh, comes in to serve. Cartmel not really having played before, but, you know, a lot of fun to see him get, get a chance to play and get a chance to get his name in the stat book. Oh... And he served before getting the okay to serve. Wait for the beckon. <laughs> oh, he's going to give him another chance. Uh, <laughs> doesn't count until he, until he blows the whistle. <laughs> and he wants to give the okay back. Oh, my God. Too funny. Whoa. Oh, there's an easy kill there. Oh. Joe Thayer. <laughs> Thayer taking advantage. Clark Mel more of a show than the ball in play. Well, get some appearances. You got to like that. That's a big booming serve. Great serve by Joe. Oh, 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 Coach oh, puts oh, it away. Oh. And that was Trevor Bryant. I mean, talk about a shoestring set. That was terrific. And there's game point. Well, they're saying it's not game. There was some confusion after the after the conference as to who's right. point. Uh, Carmel and, and uh, the, the comp bit of comic relief with Carmel, I think everybody's trying to be sure now we didn't miss anything, did we? Well, Brian's back to serve, and the score says 24-15. Yep. Huge serve nice there. Nice serve there. Brian. Go, for the, go for the exclamation point. There plays it over. Ooh. Um, oh, oh. I call a lift too here. Bad. That, yeah, that was just all kinds of. Yeah, that, that was not a very well executed point there from Nevada Union, but oh, it's it still 24 16. Oh, it just didn't have a pass to work with. This is like the last one where they have about half a dozen, at least a half a dozen game points. That one's going to fall in. Wow. Curtis ending the game with a flourish. Same score as before. As you can see on the Food and Farm Show scoreboard, Nevada Union winning game three by the same score they won game two, 25-16. <laughs> Coach Johnson, a little bit of a grin talking to, and he's talking to uh, Coach Salcedo and Coach Johnson's assistant about whether the tiebacks are, are, you know, the net. Yeah, this has been a, a very up and down match with uh, the momentum going back and forth. Jesuit started off very strong, kind of putting Nevada Union back on their heels, 
but Nevada Union bouncing back with some stellar defense, some, some great offense from uh, Bobby Curtis, Austin Marks, Kittle, Vojak. It's just been an all-around team game. It, it really has. I was really sort of concerned after the first <laughs> game. You know, it's like uh, you came up short and you really uh, – I didn't despair, but you do sort of wonder what's going to happen here because – Jesuit executed so well and and was just so consistent and strong and Nevada Union you know gave away about half a dozen points into the net serving it into the net and uh, to see them come back uh, in the middle of the second game like they have and then hold on to that momentum ever since and and really for Jesuit sort of lose its edge lose its execution I mean a, a real swing oh yeah and and again, this has just been a team effort. You look at Jesuit, and you've got Presida with a majority of the digs, Buck with almost all the kills, and Stanius. He he didn't even get a stat that third game. I, I think uh, I think Coach Johnson's confidence in him shook after he had three errors in game two. Uh, so you look at Jesuit, and you see they have players that are very good at one particular mm-hmm. aspect, and they work well together. But then you look at Nevada Union, and you've got just all, all this ink on their roster. They've just been, they've really risen to the challenge that Jesuit put to them. Really impressive. I mean, to say, you know, everybody's, you know, nobody's got 10, but a bunch of people have five. <laughs> you know, that's, a, that's an interesting uh, stat pool for the night. As the uh, teams take the floor again, game four, Nevada Union up two games to one. In this non-league game, Nevada Union playing basically the best volleyball they've played all season. I'm Steve Sitter here doing the play-by-play with me. Uh, our good pal Ed. <laughs> Ed Martin doing the color. Jer- Jerry Davenport, Gerald Davenport putting us on an un- unexpected or at least unaccustomed uh, uh, front roll here tonight. But we're pleased to... Uh, be here with y'all and to bring you uh, uh, what, to, to my mind, is some of the best volleyball we've seen this season from the man, the minors and certainly a worthy opponent, whatever their struggles tonight in Jesuit. Yeah, Jesuit showing why they are 5-0 and in league and have such a good record. But uh, they're, they're struggling a bit here in Nevada Union, putting up some good defense and even better offense. It's Bryant serving. Just wow. clearing the net. Oh, the oh, ball off the heating unit oh. again. <laughs> poor, Joe, poor Joe Thayer. He says the ball goes everywhere. He doesn't want it to. Yeah, that heating unit is racking up some good stats. They may have even gotten a third uh, point there. But, oh, uh, Trevor Bryant, usually so consistent on the serve, has one bloop into the net. Back to service Thayer. Oh, great Ooh. dig there, but Brian, no one there to follow it up. Uh, just got it on his fingers. He didn't really have good enough contact for it not to just fly out of the court. And Jesuit has their first lead here in over a full game. Oh, nice reaction by Happy. And there's Stanius coming back with a kill, proving he deserves to be out there. <laughs> he's, he's pumped all of a sudden. He's back. Games always look better when you're ahead. That serve barely clears the net. Ooh, ooh. Another block. Oh. Stanius again. Gable really excited with that. Oh, look, that's so good, the rooster fighting like that. It's there serving again. A long block. Oh, ooh, Hits ooh. the rail a little bit. Curtis dumps it over. Gable just manages to get it over the net. Curtis throwing it right back. Happy with a nice dig. Bojack throws it deep. Oh, off the oh. lights. Whoa. And then there's the ball coming right oh. into oh the God. scorer's table. Oh. Gable goes into this off the scorer's table. That was scary. I mean, he caught the corner of the scorer's table. Luckily, it's a rounded corner. I mean, he, he could have punched a hole in himself there the way he hit that thing. 
think he can give an assist yeah. to the fluorescent lighting up oh. there as it knocks the ball short. Oh, yeah. Well, here's Blount, the serve. And Gable is blocked. Going to call Gable in, in the net and out yep. to boot. So Nevada Union's point. That was a comedy of errors from the, I think, Coach Johnson up talking to Gable about how that's how you don't do it. <laughs> Blount serving again. That is oh, how you do. That's do too it. bad. Blount's got an interesting service motion when you look at it. It's kind of a roundhouse, and you can't tell where his release point is. I think that's one reason he can be so effective. Gable on the serve. And Kittle hits it right into the block, and out it goes. Kittle having a great day offensively. Just everything he hits up there seems to go his way. After a few errors in the first game, he's really settled down. Ooh, uh, ooh. Pepe can't quite pancake it. Astanius comes off with another kill. Yeah, that was just a little tip over the block, and unfortunately, Pepe clear across court from it, still almost able to get there. Low serve there from Presida. Great save there by Thayer. And that oh. ball's going to sail way wide. Gable swinging for the fences, uh, but he was, the ball was about a foot from his chest. So a good, a valiant attempt. But good distance, know. but uh, this is volleyball, not shot put. Salcedo in with the serve. Partial block there. Oh, oh and off the unit. Oh. And sadly, that's not going to work out for Nevada Union. Live by the unit, die by the unit. Yeah, that unit does not have a Nevada Union jersey all the time. <laughs> Here we go. Medina going to try again. Gets it over. Happy with a nice dig. Oh, and poor Medina <laughs> gets it in the chest. Oh, poor guy gets a serve and still manages to come up with it. Oh. Yeah, a little, little bit handcuffed there. Very much. Nice Kittle serve. Yeah, get, getting in the mid chest is what you don't want. Mason Salcedo. Wow. Bryant with a very nice kill. 7-7. Seven, seven. Coach Johnson gets up to give some instructions to a couple of his players. Bryant having a pretty quiet day offensively. With only five kills. Whoa. Look at Austin Marks right there Whoa. to pay for the miss hit. Nevada Union is making the most of those opportunities the Jesuit is giving them. A lot less errors, and Jesuit is kind of lofting some shots up there for him. Yep. Whoa. And a miscommunication Whoa. there between McAleese and Thayer. Oh. And you get the feeling that Jesuit might be trying to do just a little too much, feeling some pressure down two games to one, and now nine to seven in game four here. Yeah, I, I think I think they're definitely feeling the heat, and trying to do too much on every play. Uh, you say I'm I'm going to put this one away, and you know you'd lose your focus that way. As you take a look at the Food and Farm Show scoreboard, you see Nevada Union off to a slim lead in game four, but. If you remember, Jesuit in game one always was just two points ahead, just kind of stringing Nevada Union along. So they, they can definitely come back here. A slim lead is not a safe one with the Marauders. No, if it if, if they regel like they had, then they could be back in a hurry. Okay, so Medina comes out, shoots back in. Shoots with a couple kills on the day. And Buck with the kill there. Yep. There's not enough of the block to get it back over the net. 
That is Buck's 10th kill tonight. He's quiet in the middle, but he rolled up a, a good momentum in the first game. Uh-oh, off the, off the unit. And Curtis manages to get it right back over. Here's ooh, scrambling. Ooh, ooh. Just gets it back over. Oh, Gable Heppy. going for the oh, slam dunk. Oh, Can't Heppy. put it away, but... Heppy's, Heppy's bounce went off the unit, and Salcedo was frozen. Got a hand on it, but no control. Yeah, that was a series of unfortunate bounces there for Nevada Union. Oh, and there's an ace for Buck. Oh, all of a sudden, Jesuit goes up by one. Now, this is not a team you want to have take you to five. And with the addition of Stanius getting some kills this game, they have three very powerful offensive weapons that they can go to at any time. Now for Buck and Sanius both to come back like this. There's Curtis, can't quite put it away. Gable up and blocked. Ooh, and it's going to fall bounds. out. Well, and, and Medina got himself a dig on that one, so he's not statted out completely. Skunked on his stat line. Buck serving again. Uh, they're going to oh. call a double hit there on Salcedo. And suddenly, it is 12 to 9, Jesuit. Five straight points for the Marauders. A long serve there. And Austin Marks gets way up there and slams it home. You know, the one thing I've noticed is Austin Marks is not one for excessive celebration. He's very matter-of-fact about his kills. Well, he has 10 so far. Lots of chances to observe. And that was a nice block wow. by Curtis. Wow. Bojack really excited about that one. Curtis showing great presence find himself right where that ball came in. And oh, there's the left. That was a total, left. total throw there. It came into his hands and he flipped his wrist back out. It's like, no, oh, that's too long a contact. Yeah, and <laughs> he, he knows that's why he's coming out. <laughs> well, at least Medina got a dig out of that one. So. <laughs> and more miscommunication. Wow, wow. Jesuit. Wow. Just when, just when they were, you know, back in, the, in it, a couple of fairly, you know, playground mistakes. And suddenly, Nevada Union with four straight points to get a run of their own. Nice dig there from Salcedo. Bryant throws it over. Gable to the block, and it lands out. Uh, I think I, that's the right call there. Yeah, I don't, uh, there wasn't, there really wasn't any way for that to be a Nevada Union point. There were just too many, too many things that didn't work. There's McAleese with the serve. Oh, and making the most of that Whoa. timing oh. was Bryant. <laughs> Bryant stayed in the air about 10 seconds there. Yeah, that's, that's basketball hang time. <laughs> just stays in the air long enough to poke it over the top of the would-be blockers. Wow. And Tittle winds up. Oh, just barely. Just hits it out. Man. And back is Joe Thayer for the serve. All tied up at 14. And Thayer with his oh. first error of the game. The, the moment you think Thayer might bring him back into focus, he, he hits one out. Nevada Union back on top. Ty Blount for the serve. <laughs> oh, and just can't get it over. Trading service errors, the worst. <laughs> just falls short. There's Gable with the serve. 
And Bojack gets blocked, but it falls out. Wow. Good one there. That was funny. Gable started his, his service motion, and uh, Coach Johnson flashed him a sign. And he had to change suddenly. It may have thrown him off a little bit. And Nevada Union is back on the serve here. That's Heppy. And it falls out. Wow. And no touch. Wow. Stanius with another error. And that just... That was a surprise to see it go out. Good pass, good set, and just wide shot from, from inside the center. Stanius with five errors. And Heppy with a service error himself. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm dying over here, guys. <laughs> well, the Bad Union still with a lead, 17-16. And there's Kittle. Oh. Just hitting it through the defense. That's when you say it's a good thing he's such a good setter. We'd see him on the left side all the time otherwise. Kittle with three kills this game. And Salcedo with the serve. And blocked. Whoa. I couldn't tell if that was Brian or Marks. They, they both had a shot at it. Yeah, uh, I think it may have been Bryant's block. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Marks. He had the inside. He usually give it to them. Oh. Salcedo just serves it a bit long. The second service error of the match. Don't be giving us all these service errors, guys. This is not the time for that. There's Joe Schutz back to serve. He's been pretty quiet except for a few kills. Nice low serve. And Kittle hits it into the net. Well, it's real interesting. We really haven't been seeing the big boomer serves. I think both teams have sort of knuckled down and played a little more conservatively. Well, Jesuit has had a few big hitters. Buck and Gable right. will will hit will hit it in there with some authority. Oh, and Schutz just clears the oh. net with his serve. There's Bryant, and Bryant hits it into the net. Oh. Tied at 19. Not where you want to be. Uh, there's a timeout taken. Coach Salcedo trying to calm his team down. Try and slow the pace a little bit. His, his team is making a lot of errors. That's what's odd. It's not like they got giddy and lost their, their composure or anything. It's just they're not getting their hits. They're not getting the ball over the net when you have to. That's... Disconcerting. Here we go. As we take a look at the Food and Farm Show scoreboard, you see Nevada Union up to a two-game-to-one lead, but this game wide open, 19-19, and this has been a, an error-filled game. For both teams. For both teams. Trading service errors, uh, shots into the net. Uh, if, if anything can go wrong, it, it's going wrong. Very few clean points being won here. Blocking errors, just everything you can do, they do. I mean, ball handling errors. Not as many ball handling errors, perhaps, in the fourth as in uh, earlier, but still. Just it's made a few, but for the most part, Nevada Union has been struggling, just getting balls to fall down. Oh. Nice save there by Gable. And it's a oh. miscommunication there. Oh, just a push over it. Ty Blount had to come clear across and just wasn't in a position to make a play. Salcedo looked like he had a chance at it going back, mm -hmm. but I think he expected some help to be behind him. Yeah, it's a, moving backward in that situation is not what you want to do. And Kittle pounding it home. Oh, great. And Blount getting a, a key dig in there to set that point up. And now we are tied at 20. Kittle back for the serve. Happy with a nice dig. And Brian just throws it over, trying to get his team to reset. Oh. Kittle with a nice dig there. 
was a long shot there. Ooh. And Gable can't get underneath it. Now Gable and Persita both going for that, that pop it up, and then Gable left with having to hit it from way back in the back. Oh, the sprint to the finish is hard on the nerves. Kittle serving again. And there's a kill for Buck, wow. who has been relatively quiet after the first two games. Gets in there with a second kill of game four to tie it back up to 21. And there he is back for the serve. Oh, a nice dig there by Schutz. And just not enough. Gable again trying to just save it, keep the point alive for his team, but Man, not get much to work with. Mm. There's Riley Burzens back for Nevada Union up 22 21. There's Gable. Nice save there by Kittle. Burzens pushes it over. Jesuit sets up. Oh. With Oh. A block by Wojak. Wow. wow. Getting his third block of the match. <laughs> he has kind of a little, I don't know if it's like a roar and a grin. It's its funny to watch, but he uh, appreciates his. Gable. It's it long. Kittle with the dig. Bryant just pushes it over. Ooh. And putting it away is Thayer with only a second kill. He's been all over the place, but only a second kill of the match, keeping uh, Jesuit in it. Well, had had one really good setter's dink earlier. I think it, the surprise element when Thayer goes on offense, you're not expecting it. Nice dig there by Kittle, who's making a stand defensively. And the shot hard off the heating unit falls out. That's right. More points for the unit, but Joe Schutz getting handcuffed on that one for sure. And here's Bryant. Match point here, 24-22. <sighs> looks like looks like our cameraman is directing Bryant where to where to go. And a miscommunication oh, there. Wow. And that wow. is the match. Wow. Wow. Nevada Union comes away from this one on top. 25-21, 16-25, 16-25, 25-22, as you can see there on the Food and Farm Show scoreboard. Wow, that I, I think Nevada Union dodged a bullet just then. That Jesuit was really pulling back together, and you got to say that was a just hanging on to win like that. Quite a night here at the Ally. Yeah, a, an overall team victory there for Nevada Union, I would say. And uh, I think now's, now's about the time we uh, start talking about player of the game. Ed, what, uh, what are you thinking? That's right. Give us a minute to think about it. Yeah, we'll, we'll take a break here, talk about player of the game. You're watching exclusive coverage here of Nevada Union Minor Volleyball on the Touchdown Production Sports Network. We're going to have to do some. It's time to visit the newly remodeled BNC True Value Home and Garden Center. The new BNC has completely changed for your shopping convenience. Their new expanded garden center has everything you need, including expert advice on trees, shrubs, and perennials. Check out their new website and the new spring hours. And thank you for voting BNC the best hardware and building supply in 2012. So start right, start here at BNC True Value Home and Garden Center. The Hauser family reminds you if it's round, rubber, and it rolls, then you're sure to find it at Plaza Tire and Auto Service. From regular car and truck tires to small specialty tires for your trailers and golf carts, you can trust Plaza Tire has the tire for you. They stake their reputations on it every day. Plaza Tire and Auto Service. Auto repair done on your schedule, not theirs, in Penn Valley, Nevada City, and in Colfax.
Be sure to join us each week right here on NCTV Channel 11 at 6.30 to 7.30. And, of course, on our YouTube channel, The Food and Farm Show. And, of course, brought to you by Touchdown Productions, the Foothills leader in sports television. This is Gil Dominguez saying thanks a lot for tuning in tonight. And be sure to stay with us after the game as we present the Touchdown Productions Player of the Game Award created by Stuckey Engravers. Once again, the Touchdown Productions staff will select the best player of tonight's game and award them with a plaque created by Stuckey's. It's the Touchdown Productions Player of the Game Award coming up right after this exciting sports telecast right here on your NorCal Game of the Week. Guys, back up to you. And we're back here at the Ally Gymnasium in Nevada Union. Our Stuckey Engravers Player of the Game, number 11, Evan Kittle. And uh, we've got Evan right here. Evan, fantastic game. Thank you. Uh, Nine kills, six digs, two aces to your name. Uh, what, what can you say about a, a non-league game like this that leads into some of the toughest league games you're going to have? Um, you know, coming off of the Granite Bay loss last night, that was really an emotional and physical tiring game. And, you know, coming into this, knowing that, you know, it doesn't matter for your re league record, you know, you get a little down. But right. um, you have to take care of business, and I think that's what we did tonight. Oh, yeah, the, I would say this was overall a, a good team victory. You had stats uh, all around kind of spread out. Uh, talk a little bit about game four. Uh, the momentum kind of shifted back towards Jesuit after you uh, handily took game three. How do you respond to something like that? Um, well, with that game, game four, um, you know, I think we felt comfortable after winning game three. And um, just coming back, you know, we have to keep our energy up. And that's really the what we have to focus on is energy. And so getting that game four is just, you know, you got to push through that. So that's just a kind of a flop game kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, the loss at Granite Bay, uh, not to put too fine a point on it, but uh, there was definitely a discrepancy in blocks between the games you won and the games you lost. Coming into this game where you, had, uh, you have two big hitters like Alec Gable and Ryan Buck, uh, what, what do you work on to try and shut down uh, those hitters and try and improve upon uh, yesterday's game against Granite Bay? Um, you know, the middles are really the big influence on our blocking. If they're doing good, we have a great game. We have a great game blocking. But, um, you know, coming with uh, Buck and uh, Gable, you know, you just got to put a big block up and then hope your defense gets behind it because if your middle, like Lucas and Austin, if they're not doing too well, you just got to rely on your defense. Right, and uh, the, the errors in game four, I mean, with both teams trading uh, service errors, uh, kill errors, uh, how, do you keep your, how do you keep your focus? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean you just got to push through. I mean, that's why we had, we had so many errors, because it was our energy and we were on the down low, because we felt comfortable. And, you know, every team, every team and every game we've lost, it's because we felt comfortable and we weren't going after it. And so that's... That's got to be our mindset. It's just just go after everything, go after every game. And with uh, with Granite Bay yesterday, Jesuit today, and Deloro tomorrow, uh, for, for this third game coming up tomorrow, uh, how are you going to prepare after these two very hard fought games? Man, it's going to be tiring. I know <laughs> that. I know I'm going to crash on Thursday, but it's just something you got to push through. I mean, volleyball is a game of intensity and emotion, and you just got to be there for it. You got to, you know, when you, you go to school, you're tired, but you come here, you got to be pumped up, and you got to be ready to go, and you got to put it all on the court. Well, we definitely saw a lot of that. Evan, thank you very much thank for joining you. us. Yep. Excellent game. Best of luck tomorrow. We will be here to cover it. Thank you. And there, there you have it, player of the game, number 11, Evan Kittle. Fantastic game, nine kills, six digs, four digs late in the game to save it for, uh, for game four. Yeah, just a, a, an absolute team victory there for Nevada Union, shutting down uh, a, a very high-powered Jesuit offense. Coming in with uh, Stanius with a few kills, Gable coming in and really mixing things up, but Buck with with uh, 11 kills really was the main threat, and uh, Nevada Union managed to shut him down. 
Well, they did, and you know it's funny because it, it gave Coach Johnson in the post uh, game. He, he sits his team right down on the bench. They're not over in the corner of this, and he sits them on the bench and gives them a lecture, and and then starts talking about the postseason. You know, this is the kind of team that's going to come out of the other br- side of the bracket. You know, what's the playoffs going to look like? I mean, that's you know you're already looking there. Uh, we've got to finish out our our league play just like they do, but. You know, it's, it's coming up fast. You know you're going to the postseason. You better be ready. So, you know, uh, when, they're, when they're on, you can tell they're a formidable team. I thought the, the Miners did well to capitalize on their opportunities and to maintain their own focus. Uh, you know, once again, we saw the unforced errors at the service game come up, a few other uh, errors like that. But uh, consistently, consistency is it, something we've seen this this year that, I think is welcome, and we've certainly got to be pleased to that they're doing this well at this point in the season. If they can get to Adele or tomorrow, go ahead and win out the um, the conference, then they go in a very strong position into the playoffs. And we'll be here tomorrow, as as we say. And uh, unfortunately, I won't, but I know uh, <laughs> we'll have a good time with it. And the Miners certainly uh, given us a great season this year. Yeah, Ed, you will be missed tomorrow. I uh, <laughs> think I'm going to be uh, holding down the fort here with our executive producer, Gilbert M. Dominguez. So this will be uh, a very fun day. Camera operators, Gerald Davenport and Brian Wells. Excellent job, guys. Announcers, Steve Sitter with me, Ed Martin. Thanks, Steve. Good to work with you again. Office manager, Lynn Dominguez. The remote facilities, the Commander 2. Commander Maintenance, Plaza Tire and Auto Service, and Reedy's Auto Parts. Player of the Game Award, brought to you by the Food and Farm Show and Stooky Engravers. Touchdown Accounting, Cinto Graziano, LLP. Final score, Nevada Union up 25-21, 16-25, 16-25, 25-22. We will be here tomorrow to watch Nevada Union take on the Delaro Golden Eagles. Golden Eagles. I'm Steve Sitter. Joining me was Ed Martin. Hope you join us again tomorrow. And this has been Nevada Union Volleyball. Go Miners. Here once again with Mary Sanicus, Master Gardener. And Mary, you got some big information. I'm announcing the spring plant sale. A chance to get all your tomatoes. Propagated by Master Gardeners according to nursery standards. The big sale is Saturday, May the 11th, 9 a.m. to noon. And I understand that people are parked in the parking lot ready to break through the string right at 9 a.m. and grab all the tomatoes. It will be held here at the Demonstration Garden, 1036 West Main Street, Grass Valley, and it's behind the NID building. Lots of room for parking, and the timing is perfect for our area for planting vegetable gardens. Featuring locally grown tomatoes, peppers, ground cherries, greens, herbs, perennials, California native plants, and more. With Master Gardeners available to help you choose the right plant for your garden. You can't go wrong with that. Master Gardener plant sale coming up right here on May 11th. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Live from the rodeo grounds in Penn Valley, California, Touchdown Productions, simply the best in local sports television, is proud to present the day two of the Coors 48th annual Penn Valley Rodeo. So get ready for some of the best rodeo in the county because it's coming up next on your Foothill Game of the Week.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Penn Valley Rodeo Grounds for day two of the 48th annual Penn Valley Rodeo. I'm Ken Tribby along with Alan Barros and Jill Leslie. Our producer and director, as always, is Gil Dominguez. And, of course, the rest of the Touchdown Production Sports team is here in Penn Valley for our continuing coverage of this weekend's rodeo event. Alan? We had a great night last night with the uh, All Bulls. And that's right, Ken. The conditions were excellent last night for the Bulls on the event, and the crowd was really pleased as they saw several great riders take on those Bulls with the top rider coming home with the win with the score of 80 points. And today we're going to see a full schedule of events along with the crowning of the Rodeo Queen, and we're going to meet uh, Grand Marshal Don Raymond. But first, with our roving rodeo reporter, Jill Leslie, let's see what else is going on. Hey, thanks. We're up here on the brand new bridge they built for the rodeo, the 2005 rodeo this year. They built this specially for the contestants so they don't have to drag their gear and lug it through the arena over there. And they walk over here and go right into the staging area. So it's pretty impressive. And we, as some special media uh, representatives, get to stand up here and get a little bit of a bird's eye view of what's going on in the arena. The arena looks great. And I've... I haven't seen so many horses here in a long time. Well, last year we missed the rodeo, but this year is great. And um, pretty soon we're getting ready for the real rodeo events. Even though last night was such a great turnout, it was just bull riding. It was an introduction. and A huge crowd showed up, but tonight is the real rodeo events. My favorite, personal favorites, are team roping and calf roping. And I can see... Down here, all of the cowboys getting ready. So I'm looking forward to that. So stay tuned for us here later. We'll be interviewing the Queen contestants and also the president of the Penn Valley Rodeo Association, who really deserves some, um, some uh, kudos because this was a miracle. It came together so well. So back to you, Ken and Allen. Yeah, thanks, Jill. Um, tell me real quick while we're looking around here, what makes those two events your favorite? What do you think? Why do you think that is? Oh, you checked out on me before. Okay. I didn't hear you there. I'm sorry. Yeah. What makes those two events you talked about your favorite? Well, they're, uh, they're tight. Well, you watch them. It's just a miracle when you see those people. Um, I look back at, back at the camera. Sorry there. Um, I have tried some of these events myself, and I can't seem to rope a calf's hoof. I can't do it. And then for them to make it look so effortless is um, amazing. And then the horse works with them, backing up. It's um, a miracle. And uh, it's timed event, so it makes it a little bit more competitive, and uh, there's a lot of talent there. Yeah, you know, I think I agree with you. And what, what I find really interesting is, it, is that it is a team effort. It's, uh, it's the horse and the cowboy or the cowgirl. It's not just somebody sitting on top of a, a wild, raving animal out there. It's a, it's a team effort. I kind of like that. Yeah, those horses are team players. Um, they know exactly what to do. I wonder who's in charge out there. You know. I think I have an idea, and, I, and I, something else that strikes me is that, you know, that the horse probably, some of these horses are worth as much as the truck and trailer that got them here. Right. So we're talking about some real athletes. Um, so I think you're right. I'm not sure who's in charge. I would, well, bet, I would bet on the horse. Well, pay attention. If everyone watches this event, um, when the horses, they know in advance when to back up and to tighten up the rope, uh, there's more to it than meets the eye. If you pay attention tonight, you can see some magic out there. Well, if we don't distract them too much with talk, maybe we can uh, we can see that happen. Okay. I agree with you 100%. <laughs> well, it looks, I, I visited you over there and saw you've got a pretty good view. You don't have sunshine in your eyes like we do over here, so I don't think you should be missing anything. No, 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 no. We're not going to miss anything. Anything and, and you know, as always, Gil does a great job, is, and the camera people do a great job bringing this thing together. So, we're all going to have some fun. It's nice talking to you. Thank you. All right, Alan, what's your take on tonight? What's going to happen here? I, I think we're just going to be able to see a great deal of really interesting <laughs> events with the, quite a bit of variety. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to see it, watching the calf roping and the team roping, as Jill said. Absolutely. So, you know. Uh, Jill, thanks, and Alan, thank you very much. I want to remind you, while we have a little pause here, that the Coors 48th Annual Penn Valley Rodeo is an exclusive touchdown production and is being underwritten by Coors and Coors Light. Coors and Coors Light are brewed cold, high in the Rocky Mountains, and shipped cold to you. Coors is also proud to be a corporate partner of the Penn Valley, Penn Valley Community Rodeo Association as they present the 48th Annual Rodeo in Penn Valley. 
continuing the rich traditions of the Old West. So taste the cold. Coors and Coors Light, Golden, Colorado. Liberty Motors. Liberty Motors is proud to present Rodeo Sales Days during this year's rodeo season and invite you to see their new display of the 2005 Dodge Ram diesel trucks at the 48th Annual Penn Valley Rodeo. Only Liberty Motors carries a selection of Dodge trucks in Grass Valley, and they congratulate the Penn Valley community on 48 years of great rodeo. That's Liberty Motors. Hanson Brothers Construction and HBE Rentals. No job is too large or too small for Hanson Brothers Enterprises. And Hanson Brothers is proud to continue their sponsorship of this 48th annual rodeo and is happy to provide several tons of sand and material to the Penn Valley Rodeo to upgrade the arena for the safety of the animals and the riders. Hanson Brothers Construction and HBE Rentals. Burkholm Loans. Jo- Burkholm Loans can finance life you've always imagined in Nevada County. And John Red Burke offers many different loan programs, including easy-to-own loans with 100% financing and interest-only options. With his experience, John can show you that there are many loan programs now available, and he has one that is sure to fit your lifestyle. That's Burkholm Loans. Grass Valley Glass. Shauna, Marty, and their son, Curtis Sawin, specialize in everything glass. From mirrors to windows, they can repair or replace any window product. And Grass Valley Glass provides one-day windshield replacement or repair and works with your insurance company to get you back on the road quickly. That's Grass Valley Glass. Golden Green Equipment Rentals. Now that the rains are over, it's time to get back to work, and that's why Golden Green is brand new John Deere tractors for your lawn and garden needs. Golden Green also carries other equipment like trenchers and walk-behind tillers and provides U-cart concrete service for those small concrete jobs around the house like fence posts and walkways available at Golden Green Equipment Rentals. And by Touchdown Productions, simply the best in local sports television. All right, folks, I think we're going to be, st- be starting here pretty quick, and as it'll be, I think, a, a, uh, a classic rodeo start. Uh, we'll have some colors. We'll have, uh, at some point, probably a grand entry. We'll get to at least have a look at everybody who's going to compete because they may be uh, uh, not too easy to see once we get started with the, uh, with the action here, Alan. So I think they're going to introduce these guys to us. Take a look at the folks that are going to be out here competing. Yeah, and I anticipate we'll be seeing the Grand Marshal, Mr. Don Raymond, pretty soon also. Yeah, and he's a fellow that deserves um, uh, our attention and and, uh, certainly some kudos. And I think I can see the young lady who's going to sing the national anthem for us. She did a great job last night. Yeah, and last night, as you said, it was a classic beginning to the rodeo with all the colors and... Like you said, that's pretty much how most rodeos start. That's ex- that's exactly how they start. Yeah, it's. Uh... All right. While we're uh, gearing up for this this wonderful event here, we'll remind you again that the uh, 48th annual Penn Valley Rodeo is underwritten by a number of people, not the least of which is Coors and Coors Light. Cold filtered Coors and Coors Light are brewed with Rocky Mountain spring water and delivered to you cold to your favorite store. They are also proud of the rich traditions of the Old West and the rodeo competition that came from that way of life. That's why they support the Penn Valley Rodeo Community Association and salute the longevity of the 48th annual Penn Valley Rodeo. Taste the cold. Coors and Coors Light, Golden, Colorado. Price Concrete Pumping. You don't have to lift that heavy wheelbarrow full of heavy concrete anymore. With Price Concrete Pumping, you can deliver any amount of co- concrete exactly where you need it. Owner Jim Price travels the foothills for both commercial and residential product projects with none too big or too small. Jim Price pumps them all. That's Price Concrete Pumping. And by Players Pizza. Players Pizza is serving up fresh pizza right here in Penn Valley Pizza. Ever since 1996, Players Pizza has only used the freshest ingredients. They have catering available and weekly, nightly specials for the whole family. You can also enjoy your favorite sporting event on the new high-definition television. They're open seven days a week till 9 and on Fridays and Saturdays till 10. That's Players Pizza, the pizza place that scores big in taste. Penn Valley Laundromat in Wonderland and Grass Valley. Winnie and Patrick Spear have created a great place for you to do the hardest weekly chore. The Penn Valley Laundromat is clean and modern to make your job easier and your quarters go farther. 
There's always an attendant on duty and plenty to do in the center. They're open every day from 6 to 10 in the Penn Valley Shopping Center. And by Plaza Tire and Auto Service, family owned and operated by Mike and Mark Hauser, with two locations to serve you in Nevada City and in friendly Penn Valley. Plaza Tire thanks you for your support over the years and for voting them Nevada County's best repair shop, and that's why they love to support local community events like this 48th annual Penn Valley Rodeo. It's Plaza Tire and Auto Service. And by Touchdown Productions, simply the best in local sports television. This is Alan Barros along with Ken Dribby, Tribby, Jill Leslie, and Gil Dominguez and the entire Touchdown Productions sports team bringing you this exclusive rodeo telecast today. Thank you for tuning in each week and making us the most popular local program on our Foothill Network of Stations, ACTV Channel 20 in Auburn, Seabridge Connections Channel 23 in Colfax and Altastera, LOP Channel 7 in Bear River, and NCTV Channel 11 in Grass Valley. All right, we've got, uh, I think that's Doug Mathis who's getting this crowd kind of ready to go here, Alan. Again, I'm looking forward to just a great evening of some real Western traditional sport. And look at the people in this arena while these riders are coming in. Yeah, right, right now you see see these girls riding around. Look, looks like the flags are showing all the sponsors that help put on this great Penn Valley Rodeo. And we might have a little rodeo going on before the rodeo starts. <laughs> kind of typical. Some of these animals get a little bit uh, little antsy when there's people around, lots of color, lots of movement. She'll get that horse under control. And we'll have a good time. And here are the contestants that are coming in now. Well, I can assure you those are not all the contestants. <laughs> I think this is kind of an optional thing for some of these folks. And, you know, some of them are probably in the back there uh, getting saddled up and tacked and ready to go. And So they have a short representation. They have a short list of folks who want to come out here and, and ride around. Okay, now Doug is introducing some uh, some ladies. Uh, I don't know if there are any more, but uh, people that are uh, well known on the NFR circuit, or at least on the on the professional circuit. Yeah, this lady that just came out—that's Erin Jasper. She is Miss CCPRA. Is what? Okay. Now now, this young, this young lady is uh, from the Nevada County Horsemen. As I said earlier, these ladies, uh, young ladies are out representing their various rodeos and arenas. This is Morgan Hansen, a um, great rider, still does barrel racing, and uh, very involved with the Nevada County Horsemen. Now, this young lady is from Auburn Stampede, which is, again, um, another local, well, local uh, Rodeo Association and, and Rodeo, so she's representing her her organization here at this rodeo tonight. Yeah, they they have their obligations when they're named the queen of their rodeo because they go and they represent that rodeo at all the rodeo at all the other rodeos. That's correct. And so what's going to happen is the queen or princess who wins tonight will be doing the same thing in Auburn and and Nevada County Horsemen and elsewhere. Little modified rodeo uh, wave there, but it works. And this lady right here goes to Placer High School, as mentioned by the announcer Doug Mathis. Now, 
Now, Doug was saying this young lady, she's riding what the Cowboys would call a yellow horse. Uh, we call it Pal Other folks call it Palomino or some version of the Palomino. She's 11 years old, and look how well she rides that, that horse. Yeah, it's great to see the kids coming, coming out here and giving back to their community. And she's out of rough and ready just a few miles up the road. Oh, and I've watched this little girl grow up on horses. Jamie Palmer is a local here. She's Tri-County. Um, was it Queen or Princess? I'm sorry I didn't hear that particularly, but this, these, all these young ladies can really ride these horses. Well, I think there's a little bit of confusion about who's going first here, but uh, in any event, these are two of the young ladies who competed for uh, the 48th, uh, for the Penn Valley Rodeo here for the 48th annual. So. I think Ms. Glasgow is the second rider, and I think Ms. Jewell is the first rider. Yeah, you know, we were concerned last night, Alan, about uh, this arena being uh, too wet. But, you know, as you watch these horses go around, we're getting some dust kicking up. So that's a good sign. That's a good thing. Yeah, we didn't have that last night. But oh, no. <laughs> much better for the riders now. Absolutely. Do you think these girls are having a good time out there in the arena? There's oh, probably, absolutely. what, uh, 15 or 1,800 people, maybe even, <clears throat> pardon me, maybe even more than that here. They're loving it being out in the arena on their horses. Yeah, this is a, you know, Liberty Motors has been working with Touchdown Productions for a number of years, and, and this is just this is just a number, uh, just another example of how uh, the local sponsors are kicking in and uh, with these local events. I mean, they've uh, they've done a great job over the years. Yeah, they've done a great job just helping this event happen right now. And I think Don Raymond is coming out now. He's been designated as the Grand Marshal for this year. Alan, do you have some uh, some little bio on this uh, gentleman here for us? Yeah, it says right now he's been in the Penn Valley Fire Department since 1983, and as soon as he joined, he started to help put on this rodeo here in Penn Valley and has been doing it ever since then. And the new fire station that's going to open on Spenceville Road has been dedicated in his name. And that just shows all the hard work and dedication he's put in here for over 20 years now. And this community really appreciates it. This guy's worked very hard, and uh, for him, uh, I'm sure it's an honor to be uh, nominated as Grand Marshal. And as I'm reading the uh, reading the bio on him, uh, the Rodeo Association voted to have him be Grand Marshal unanimous, unanimously. So we didn't have any contest as to who was going to be Grand Marshal this year. That's wonderful. This guy's done a lot of work for this community. This is well deserved for him. And I think we're about to get the colors and some prayer, which again, Alan, is that traditional rodeo opening. So right now, if you would please make welcome the very lovely Miss Jean Kennedy and our American tribute. Thank you. 
I told you we were going to have a real classic uh, rodeo opening, and that is really a classic. I thought it was beautiful. Yeah, it was a little bit, a little bit different than last night, but it was still very patriotic. And and you know, I was looking around, and there, you know, everybody, from what I could see, everybody had stopped and were, you know, everyone was paying attention as they should, and. Uh, it just kind of gives me the old shiveries, you know. It's uh, it's an interesting part of this this rodeo thing is this dedication to family, home, and country. It's refreshing. Man, this is great right here. As you, as you see all the branches of the military being represented tonight as they they enter the arena. Looks to me like it's been a while since you guys have marched in, uh, marched in your formation, but that's okay, because these are the guys, amongst some, amongst many, that are that are doing their service for the country. It's great to have them out here. getting quite a welcome too if you guys will notice anybody who's been in the service there is a drill instructor right in the center of that formation and wouldn't you know it he's barking commands <laughs> he's the guy with the smoky the bear hat by the way guys and tonight we ask that you watch over us in the arena of life. You know what? We don't ask for special favors. We don't ask for all daylight runs. We draw around the shoe shining walls. We draw the shoe that won't play. But the only thing that we do ask is we hold the shoe and we make that last inevitable ride. 
The country up there where the grass shows less green is stir fried. And the water where the school is very deep. That you, as our final judge, will tell us that our country dreams have been bad. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as we look upon the most beautiful flag in the world, the stars and stripes of old glory, let us join together as a body of one to confirm our faith in this country as Americans and sing with the ever lovely Miss Tito Gundy, our national anthem. Okay, folks, I don't think you lost anything in the translation by watching that on television as opposed to being here live. That was absolutely beautiful. She did a great job, and the fans, the, the fans here in the arena, absolutely silent. It was great. Alan, it was a great thing. Yeah, great opening that we got to see tonight as we got to witness military come out and just it, everything representing our country. It's good stuff. We're about to get ready for some rodeo. Yeah, you know, I think if you might be somewhere else in the world, you wouldn't be watching the rodeo on a Saturday evening in, uh, in May, springtime, and wherever. It's good to be here. And we see now the, the clowns getting on their horses right now. Well, we got some bareback horse riding going on here, and uh, you, you folks need to watch for a couple things. This bareback stuff is uh, very interesting. Uh, you'll note one thing. Again, it's uh, it's a total of 100 points possible, 50 to the animal, 50 to the rider. And uh, But you need to watch when they come out of the gate. They have to do what's called marking. Those spurs, and they are rounded spurs, so they're not flailing these horses at all, have to be up over the shoulders of the horse. See him mark out right there. You see what I mean? Now he's got to keep his spurs going. He's got to roll them up over the shoulder of the horse. Oh, rude awakening. And he hit pretty hard, pretty hard. Yeah, it's nice to see him get up right there. Oh, yeah. Most of these cowboys don't lay there long. They'll get up. They're, uh, this is not like the NFL where they bring out the stretcher <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. These guys get up, and I've seen them get up. hurt so bad they could hardly walk out, but they will get up. And you'll notice again that you've only got one uh, one clown, if you want to call him that, out there because the, the horses, unlike the bulls, are not intent on 
on causing anybody uh, any kind of harm. They're not that way. They want out. They want out and away from that rider. So that was a no time for him. He didn't make the buzzer. Yeah, it was just a split second off of it right there. Hey, what are you doing out there? What was that deal? What do you mean he got fucked off at the whistle? Okay, coming out of shoot number one, we got our second rider, and look at the action. Look at the spur action. Lost his hat, and he's going for it. He's going for it. He's hanging on. He's hanging on. Yeah, nice ride right there as he loses his hat, but he just keeps on going, and... Okay, let's watch this replay. Uh, Alan, go ahead, and I'll try to listen for a score here. Yeah, watch him as he comes out of the gate, doing a great job with this with the spurs right there. And yeah, you see, he's getting bucked around, just doing a great job staying on. And you see, he's going to lose his hat right here, but just that's okay. <laughs> tries to reach for it, but keeps on going, and then eventually, right now, he's going. He's Alan, I'm not it. convinced he was reaching for that hat. He was hanging on for dear life. He didn't care about that $15 hat. Yeah, that's always the most important thing, to just try to stay on. And that's it. And he's got to keep the legs focus. working. He's got to keep spurring that horse. And, again, I want to remind you, these are dulled-out spurs. There's nothing's, uh, nothing's cutting this horse. Nothing's harming this horse. It's a part of the... Uh, part of the art of riding and you can see we got a little rodeo within a rodeo right down there in shoot number three horses generally a little easier to handle than the bulls generally speaking Okay, here he comes out of shoot number three. Comes out marking hard. He's looking really good. Keep the legs moving. Keep the legs moving. Look at how he's bouncing off the back end of that horse. He made the buzzer. And I missed the score last time. I thought I heard 71, but I'm not sure. I'll try to get one this time for you, folks. And this rider just does a great job. He, even after the, whip, after the horn, he just stayed on and... And we're going to take a look at this last ride. Uh, it's going to be 75. And that was a 75 when you're starting this replay. That's going to be the high score for the night. Watch this guy. You see him mark out and how he's the only thing connecting him is that uh, that handle, if you will. That's all he's got, and he's got to keep those legs moving. He's got to keep those spurs rolling up on the shoulders of the horse and not touch any other part of the horse with his free hand. And, but just the just smacking the back end of that horse as it comes up. Yeah, so you see he just continues to stay on right there, yeah. and then eventually he bails once the, the clowns come. Well, these are the, yeah, these are the pickup riders, that, um, and they're out there, and you'll see them uh, pull these guys. A lot of times you'll see them take them right off the back of the horse so that they don't get from them. If they make the buzzer, a lot of times you'll see them just slide in alongside the bronc rider, and he'll just... He'll just scoop right off, and there he's gone, just like you just saw right there. These guys are pickup riders. Okay, it looks to me as if we're setting up something in the chute down there. It's uh, can't tell at the moment if it's... Uh, <laughs> exactly what we're doing here, but uh, we're going to find out in just a moment. You can see he's setting up in the chute down there. Now, the guy that's got the worst job in his whole arena is the guy behind that green chute because he's going to push that calf out, and uh, I wouldn't want to be back. <laughs> Okay, this is calf roping, and uh, so you're going to have one horse and a rider, obviously, and uh, he's going to rope, bring that calf to a stop. You'll watch him, and he has got to tie off at least three. He's got to immobilize. He's got to let the calf stand first, put him back on the ground. He's got to tie at least three.
Uh, and I don't think he made it. Yeah, the calf ended up getting. Yeah, he didn't make it. Getting up. And the, these cowboys, they have lot, lots of skill because it's going to take a lot of speed and agility to get rope down that calf and then get off and tie him off really quickly. Yeah, he was looking at about 12 seconds. But let's explain what's going on here. Okay, you see the barrier. The horse just broke the barrier. If he breaks that before the calf is out of the chute, that's a speed and ticket's going to add, I think, 10 seconds. Then he's got to rope it. If the calf goes down on the ground, he's got to pick it back up on its feet and put it back on the ground, tie off three. And it looks like looks like it's easy. That's about that calf probably weighs 180 pounds, maybe 200 pounds, and they wiggle and squirm. He's got to tie at least three and and immobilize it. But something went sideways on him. Here's our second competitor. Rope's got him. Whoa, upside down he goes. He's got to pick him up, put him down again, and watch his horse work. He's, that horse is going to keep the uh, tension on the rope. And you see how quickly he he ties up that that calf because if you take your time, you don't have a chance. Okay, and this rider got 11. Uh, the announcer's going to call it 11 and 3. What that means is 11.3 seconds. He ties the calf for six seconds. And the calf, yeah, and the calf's got to be down for six seconds. So, uh, uh, but 11 and three is his time. So that's the time to beat. The first rider had a no time, but again, he's got to mobilize that calf for six seconds. And this little guy just gets up and squirts out like uh, he's done his job at the office today. Yeah, it's amazing to see how how much skill these riders have is in running them down, the calves down, and just getting up and tie, able to flip that calf and tie him up in virtually like just a couple seconds. Yeah, it's not as easy as it looks. Okay, here we go. He's had a good start out. Oh no, and he missed him. Yeah, so it look, looked like he was going to be pretty successful in running him down, but unfortunately he just didn't get enough rope out yeah, there. He just couldn't. Ha he just couldn't hang it. And if he doesn't come back in some other event, he's not going to have steak tonight when he leaves here, even if he stops by the tack room. And here's our replay. Yeah, let's take a look at this. And you see here, he'll, he gets a pretty good start on this calf as he comes great, out of the gate. A, he got a great start. He just he just didn't he, he couldn't hit the handle. And again, watch this guy in the back of this chute if you get a chance. Uh, there's a guy in the chute with that calf, and that's the spot where, you, where I would not want to be. And you see the barrier with the uh, red flag. If that barrier is broken, that's called breaking the speed limit. He'll get a speeding ticket, and he'll add 10 seconds to his time. And basically, if that happens, you virtually have no chances. 10 seconds is an eternity in this. Yeah, absolutely, especially when the fast time right now is 11 and 3. So uh, 10 seconds is going to put you out of the game. Coming down a long ways, coming down a long ways. But now watch the horse, if you can see the horse there. Now let's leave him down six seconds and see if he's, no, he didn't even make the six. Didn't make the six. Yeah, it's a pretty stubborn calf right there as it took a while to tie him up as a little squirmish and then and the tying up was all for nothing as the calf Looks like the calf's down. about to tie the cowboy up. But that's all right. <laughs> And let's take a look at the replay. And again, watch the guy in the back of the chute. That's the guy you don't want to be. Yeah, it took, kind of takes him a while to run the calf down. Is you're going to see the calf starts to turn towards the inside when he finally gets him. Calf's getting a little squirrely on him, and then he, then he's got him, and then you know he's far down. He's lost a couple seconds just by the time it took him to to get the rope out and around. Yeah, it takes him a while neck. to pin the calf down even. And then he got squirrely on the ground. These guys aren't giving up. I mean, these are some healthy little cows, and don't. Little uh, little calves, don't tell me that these animals are abused. Here we go again. Nice job. Now he's got to put him on the ground again and watch his horse. His horse is backing up, keeping the pressure on the on the rope. He's tied off. He stays six seconds. He'll have a time. See the tension on the rope? Yeah, you see how, how tight it is right now. Now he's putting some slack in it. 
Yeah, that was a 13 and six, and as Doug just said, uh, it took him a while to get uh, to get set to put the rope on that calf. So he came a good ways down the arena. So not a bad time for what he did. Yeah, these calves know exactly what's going on. They've been through this before. Oh, absolutely. All right, this guy is. This is a cowboy from San Luis Obispo. That's uh, this guy's come quite a way. Yeah, it's about five or six hour trip up here. You can see tonight, Alan. This crowd is really, really filled in these uh, these stands on the south side. It's. Uh, uh, I wouldn't say the place is full, but you know what? Uh, this committee that put this on, you guys deserve a great, big, hearty congratulations. You've done a great job. Even the end where we are, these stands are, are not full, but they are, you know, they're getting there. We're not at capacity. We could take a, a couple of two or three people in here, but it's a great turnout. You guys ought to be proud of yourselves. And we're about to see Ryan Collins, the next rider here. As you said, Ken from San Luis Obispo. Yeah, see, it's uh, you, you, you folks can see I'm not playing with you here. There's a lot of people out here. Now, that was a quick one. Got on him right out of the gate there pretty pretty well. Got to handle him, get him down. And man, in no time. Yeah, I did a great job of roping up the calf really quickly. He got him, like, before the halfway point of the arena, but unfortunately... Just what calf was able to get up. This smart cat. <laughs> so we go to Chuck Foley. So so far, I've got it. I've got. Uh, yeah, here comes a replay. Let's watch yeah. this guy. Watch how quick he gets on him. He's on him right there. That horse isn't f what six paces out of the chute. Yeah, I got him about a quarter of the way down the arena. You got him pretty quick. Just um, that just isn't going to do it. Yeah, and the cap, he kind of got a slow start on getting a jump on the calf when he got off, but now. And unfortunately, the tide just wasn't good enough. As you'll see, the cap's going to get up in a second. Yeah, that calf breaks free. But you notice when the slack came off the rope, the horse was backing up, and that horse was doing its job. It's uh, um, real teamwork, real teamwork. Yeah, it's amazing to see the horses, how they know exactly what's going on and help out the rider. Practice, practice, practice. Got a quick – that was a quick one. That was a quick one. He's got a good chance. Get him down. we got to get. We got to beat an 11 point, 11 and 3. And he did. I think he did. If he stays down 6, I think we've got a new time. That is a new time. That's fast time for tonight. Ten and two. Ten point two seconds. Oh, but he got a speeding ticket. So that means this gentleman just. You, you see here the calf is out, but the barrier is still tight. So questionable on whether he broke it right there. Well, I think. Well, I don't know that that's the case. There's a rope inside of that. Uh, there's a rope inside of that of that chute. It's got to break free first. Yes. Yeah, so, so unfortunately, it's legit. I think that's a legit call. He got a speed and ticket. He's 20 and two. That puts him out of the running at least for right now. But great, great job by him though. Is that was the best best one we've seen all day. Now let's take another look at it here. So from, from our view, we see the calf, calf was out first, but... Oh, mishandled down and oh, mishandled. Too bad. That's too bad. He had a good one going. Yeah, he did a great job of roping him up quickly, just w wasn't able to hold on to his legs, and that cost him. All right, let's go back and take another look at this. Yeah, right here, from our view, the calf is out in that barrier. Yeah, but on the right-hand side, you can still see part of the rope. Yeah, that white line yeah, just right. broke right there. Here's what they tell me. He 
Well, that's a close call. And you see this yeah, one. That's, is... a, that's a close call, but it's not clear. Yeah, so that can go either way. So I'm not going to pass judgment on that one. I'm going to stay out of the way. The judges called it a speeding <laughs> ticket. I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah. They... That's all we do. Yeah, that's all we do. We tell, you guys are blind. You can't see this and that and the third thing. And uh, <laughs> I'm just going to be quiet. I deal with judges all week, so I'm just going to be quiet. <laughs> Yeah they're, yeah, they're different judges, folks, but uh, the net result's the same. The conclusion's final, and that's that's just kind of how it is. So. Yeah, you know, uh, folks, rodeo, it, it, these things only happen when, when people sponsor these programs, and, and Coors is one of those outfits that's been doing it now for about five years here. And um, they really contribute a great deal to this community when they, you know, when they bring out the beer and this stuff and they throw money in and they do the signs and they do all kinds of things it's wonderful uh in my mind anyway that corporate america can get down to a level and, and deal with uh, us little guys here in Penn Valley. i think it's a great thing uh, so bert's going to come out and give us some fun yep should be very interesting to see what he has to show for us tonight Oh, yeah, guys. How are you? <laughs> That's me. I'm Ken Tribby. And I'm Alan Barros. We're having a good time tonight, folks. You need to get down here and see this. Uh, as I've said earlier a couple of times, either tonight or even last night, uh, second best shot you have at seeing rodeo is right here on Touchdown Productions. But the best shot you can get is to get out here and join this crowd. These folks are having a good time. Lots of little kids running around having fun. Uh, parents having a good time seeing folks they probably haven't seen for Oh, you know, maybe uh, maybe since last year, for that matter. <laughs> yeah. Um, great, great social events. Good time. We're having fun. One more day of the rodeo to come out and witness some great action. Absolutely. We're going to be back out here again tomorrow. Rodeo starts at uh, 1 o'clock, I believe. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, this is the Foothill Game of the Week. This is the 48th annual Coors Penn Valley Rodeo, and it is being underwritten by Coors and Coors Light. Cold is not a word they take lightly at Coors, but did you know that Coors is designed for the cold? They even ship it cold so you can enjoy it cold. That's why Coors has been part of the Old West since the days of the cowpoke, and they're proud to sponsor events like the Penn Valley Rodeo to keep the rich traditions of the Old West alive for future generations. So taste the cold. Coors and Coors Light, Golden, Colorado. Liberty Motors. It's rodeo sales days at Liberty Motors, and during this year's rodeo, Liberty Motors has 30 used diesel trucks in stock at both locations. That's why Liberty Motors is the diesel depot in Northern California. And the Alkenbrock family congratulates the Penn Valley Community Rodeo Association on 48 years of great rodeo action in Penn Valley. That's Liberty Motors. This is Hanson Brothers Construction and HBE Rentals. Rental manager Craig Arthur reminds you that knowing the true cost of owned equipment is very difficult. With rented equipment, you receive just one accountable cost figure, and that's the rental invoice. Cost control is just another reason to rent rather than buy. Hanson Brothers Construction and HBE Rentals, proud sponsor of the, of the local community events and saluting the 48th year of Great Rodeo in Penn Valley. Burke Home Loans. Have you seen the latest edition of Mortgage Notes? It's the monthly newsletter inside the union. This month, John Red Burke reveals the secrets on how to save time, money, and hassles in your loan search. He also explains why a mortgage broker can be helpful to you. You can rate, shop, pre-qualify, and apply online at burkehomeloans.com or get loan information at the mortgage hotline. Burke Home Loans, voted Nevada County's best. And Grass Valley Glass. The Sawin family is a Penn Valley family, and the Sawins also own Grass Valley Glass. Grass Valley Glass is in your neighborhood every day repairing and replacing windows with Milgard window products. And the Sawins salute the Penn Valley Community Rodeo Association on their work to continue the traditions of rodeo in Penn Valley and honor the traditions of the Old West. Grass Valley Glass. Golden Green Equipment Rentals. Golden Green is a complete rental service for homeowners and contractors. They are open seven days a week, 
and now have a newly remodeled center with many products that you need, like gloves, earplugs, shovels, and straps. They also carry new John Deere tractors. That's Golden Greed Equipment Rentals. And by Touchdown Productions, simply the best in local sports television. Your favorite Game of the Week telecast is now available on DVD. That's right. Our entire sports library for the past eight years, including today's Penn Valley Rodeo, is now available for you on DVD. And Touchdown Productions is proud to announce the grand opening of our new duplication station to transfer your own personal home videos to DVD. So enjoy the DVD difference with Touchdown Productions, the name you've trusted in local television production since 1997. And uh, tomorrow, folks, we're going to bring you our next show. would be day three of the Coors 48th Annual Penn Valley Rodeo. You can see it on ACTV Channel 20, Seabridge Channel 23, NCTV Channel 11, and LOP Channel 7. Please join us. All right. It looks like old Bert's still having some fun. This guy does a great job with these animals here. He keeps this crowd going, loves his animals, does a great job. Yeah, and these animals, they're very skilled also, as you see them being being trained really well to do all do these tricks and entertain the crowd. Now, way up high, watch this. Here comes the Cherokee Aussie. Oh, and that's the dog you introduced to us last night, I believe. See how well trained all these dogs are. These dogs travel most of the year. They have their own daredevil hero. They call him Evil Knievel. You know who we're talking about. And Alf likes to see how many dogs she can jump. So we're going to start her with two. She goes up. <laughs> oh, this is great stuff. This is great stuff. Yeah, you see her. She's, she's going to try to jump over as many dogs as possible. She goes under, <laughs> and then over. All right. That's amazing. Now, can she jump four dogs? Under four. Clears all four. Ladies and gentlemen, get out of the round. Now, four dogs. Oh, 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 oh that's great. <laughs> Yeah, we mentioned last night that this guy, Bert, is uh, absolutely, certainly no stranger to rodeo. The guy's been around forever. And uh, he got some awards, I think. Uh, as I remember, he got some awards from um, uh, one of the national organizations for his shows. And, um, in fact, uh, he was nominated for the PRCA Comedy Act of the Year, and I think that was in 2004. And that was apparently the second year in a row. So this is some high-talent stuff here. Yeah, it's not just anyone that can go out and do the kind of stuff that he does out there. And it looks like we might be getting set for some team roping. Yeah, as you see, it kind of looks that way. Yeah, the Cavs come entering back into the arena. As you see, they they took off and towards the back entrance by our where we're situated at after the calf roping event. Now they made their way back in. Right, and it looks like we're also getting set uh, with some event happening, and it looks like some more horses. This looks like saddle uh, saddle bronc riding, and uh, looks like we're setting up with. I can see at least four in the chutes down at the other ends. So now this event's a little different from the bareback riding for an obvious reason. They have a saddle on this horse. Um, but it's uh, it's a little bit different uh, even for saddles. The saddle is just not really a saddle in the conventional sense of that word. Uh, you'll get a look at it, uh, folks, once you see 
one of the riders vacate the saddle, you'll get a good look at it. I, I won't try to describe it to you, but I think that's probably the next event. They brought those calves down for the uh, team roping, which will happen in probably following the, the uh, saddle bronc riding. Have you failed to do that on either side? Left to the right. My fault, your fault, anybody's fault, it doesn't matter. It's going to be a no score from the very start. We're going to John Flew. Trans Pinos, California. And a horse called Tomahawk. All right, here we go. That's going to be a first land. Coming out of the chute on the far right. Now watch him. He's going to have to mark coming out as well. So keep an eye on his where his feet are in relation to the shoulders of the horse in the front. They have to be up and over the shoulders as he comes out of the chute. That's where it's all going to happen. Now here's your one of the fence and rodeo that originated from original ranch work. And still to this day in Montana, Wyoming, some of the horse ranches, they Here we go. to ride just like this. Whoa. Oh. And you see, see right there, with, with the even with the saddle right there, he wasn't able to stay on too long. No, unfortunately, that uh, you can see that saddle doesn't have a horn on it. I, I will not try to describe to you what it might uh, what it might do to some of these cowboys <laughs> were there a horn. Um, but that's a pretty basic saddle. But our first contestant out was in no time. So Dodge pick up Vincent Tomahawk down to the arena. We get Seth Pete X. What in the world are you wearing? I didn't even Hollywood. From Hollywood? Yeah, yeah. Doing what? I'm in a new Walt Disney sequel. Doing what sequel? A Walt Disney movie. What, what was it called? Well, what do I look like, dude? I'm exploding the whole stinking cow. No, I'm ready from Toy Story. Really? Okay, while our clown keeps the crowd occupied and busy here. Again, this event, uh, Alan, is different because uh, the cowboy is not holding on to any, in other words, he's not secured to the horse like you would in a in bareback riding or in bull riding. And you see that the crowd shows their support for the rodeo being back here in Penn Valley. <laughs> yeah, and again, that's just kudos to the uh, to all the hard work and all the people that worked on this. And watch this guy go. He's having a good ride so far. And I see when this when this rider came off, he he came off minus a boot or lost his slipper, whatever it is he's wearing there. <laughs> And you see, with the saddle, it could still be just as difficult as when you're doing it without one. As the first two riders aren't able to get successful scores. Oh uh, yeah, I'm not sure if it's bareback is tougher than this or not. I, I, I would, I'd rather be hanging on to something than just my hind end on one of these animals. <laughs> I love these clowns. These guys are. Okay, we've got a good ride going so far. His feet are active. He's doing a good job. He's raking. He's not getting a lot of buck out of this horse. He may get a re-ride out of this one. Yeah, I think he should be able to. Is that horse wasn't horse was, looked a little pretty calm compared to most of the others. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm convinced, Alan, that these horses and these bulls and things, and they have uh, little unions. Let's watch him come out of here. <laughs> yeah, as you're going to see, the horse bucks is bucking at first, but then he's going he's gonna to calm down a little bit and not yeah. give the rider much of a... Yeah, I don't That's know what happened. He just kind of went flat, but he's not going to get a ray ride. They gave him a 64. But he just went flat right at the end of the ride here. And 
Yeah, fortunately he was able to get, get the first rider to get a score, just not as high as he'd hoped for since the horse could, didn't give him as much bucking action. He wants to play now, but... Uh, yeah, that's a lively horse. I don't know why she went flat at the end. I just, I don't, she's, uh... Yeah, this horse is a little stubborn to get out of the arena also. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and again, folks, we've got a crowd back there. These cowboys aren't standing there to spectate. They're, they're helping saddle and, uh, and get these animals ready to go out. And, and uh, you know, if you, if you kind of take a look at some of the hats, you'll notice that just about everybody's wearing a hat, but I think the whites have got the, uh, the black hats uh, outnumbered by quite a few. Kind of Could be that time of year. It's getting to be springtime. Yeah. The cowboys put on a little bit lighter hat. And, I'm not sure I'd want to wear a white hat, though, because with all the dirt and dust around here, I think it would get dirty pretty quickly. <laughs> I don't think there's a lot of concern about dust and dirt in the rodeo. It's getting them smashed flat. That might be a problem. This guy's having a real good ride until right there. And he just met the fence. And just missed that horn. Oh, yeah. Gonna good. Feel that, he's going to feel that tomorrow. Good, decent job right there. As he was able to keep up, keep on that horse for quite some time, though, even though he was, wasn't able to make that horn. Was, that horse was pretty wild. That horse was having some fun. <laughs> yeah, you're going to take a look at this again. Is see him marked out. He, he's got his feet up over the shoulders. He's marking. He's having a he's having a pretty good ride. He's real active, rolling the spurs up. Maybe a little too far back with his feet. Yeah, and that horse is not giving him any slack at all. That's quite a ride. And it looks like he hit, just got off center and whap right into the Yeah, it started to slide off to the right side. And Thank you. I'll take a pass. <laughs> See, Alan, I don't think he was too concerned about his hat right there. I think it was yeah, more well, like. If you're riding right there, I guess you shouldn't be. <laughs> I've got all my pieces between my, my shoes and my hat, and I'm happy. Ooh, we're going to come out. We're going to do a little spin and then come out. Yeah, we're not going to come out conventional. We're going to do it our own way. Ooh. And that horse, that horse didn't have much sense of direction at all right there. So he just runs the rider straight into the fence. Ooh, that's a tough. That's tough on the paint job on the fence. I'll tell yeah, you. That's tough, a, tough break for the rider right there. As he just didn't have much else, where else, to, much choice really. Well, let's watch what happens here, folks. This horse comes out. He does a spin inside the chute, which is a, a little bit uh, disconcerting for the rider, no doubt. But when he gets out, he does almost a beeline right for that fence. And this horse, horse wasted no time trying a, to get him off. And it was just, whoops, here we are. <laughs> that was a hard hit. That was a hard hit. Yeah, the rider had no choice but to bail there. Yeah, I think the uh, horses are winning tonight in the, old, in the saddle competition anyway. And I think we're looking at our last saddle bronc rider right here. <clears throat> okay, come on out of the chute there. Come on out of the chute. And again, another quick one right there is that, that horse wasted no time. Absolutely no time. Still having fun. Man, let's watch this again. Is 
looks like that gate opened a little bit. It looked to me like the gate opened just a little bit slow. He might have come out a little bit better had we snapped had they snapped that gate open. Yeah. But boy, once he was out, he was, he he was, was all over. Never really was on no. center on the horse. No, no chance. So it looks like that concludes the the bronc riding session. I think the, that's it for saddle, saddle Bronx, and I don't know if there will be another section. I kind of doubt it. I think they'll do these events one at a time. So I think that's it for Saddle Bronx.